Okay, we're going to get started today. I know there might be a few more people walking in. Um, grab the clicker. Thanks, everybody, for coming today. Um, I know the question is, uh, Maureen's still not back. I think you guys figured it out. So myself and Michelle and Harjo are going to kind of be working with you all today um, to, to keep us moving forward. We, hope, we think Maureen might be back uh, next month. Um, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep moving along. So um, I'm going to move over to kind of an agenda we put together today. However, with that being said, we want to stop doing a lot of the talking today as a uh, as a city staff, I'll let you guys do a heck of a lot of talking now that we've finished kind of the whole education piece. You guys have, um, many of you have sat through the council workshop, and now it's time, um, we want to use most of the day to day, let you talk with each other, um, let you ask us questions, help help you as a community advisory group uh, keep moving forward. So the schedule we, we kind of have, have up here, which can be flexible if any um, group members are a number of group members want to add other things. We really want to just get started in the welcome. We're already eight minutes into that, so i got two minutes more to go. <laughs> and then I um, want to let you all um, talk about the council workshop, and we will uh, scribe for you. But what are some of the things that resonated from your discussion, as well as um, many of you sat through more than just a discussion you had on the whole council workshop in general, let you talk about that. Then we did have a subgroup. Um, we need to talk about volunteers. We want to let them do a quick report out on that. We have several of uh, those that attended that, that meeting and that discussion, so let that group report out on that. And then uh, Arjun and Michelle are going to talk about the schedule going into the budget and through um, the election, so we're kind of on the same page with that. And then we really want to open it up for kind of discussions on the next step for the community advisory group for you all to talk about really um, where are your priority areas. We've had a lot of different discussions at the December meeting. Um, I do have, I didn't print and put the notes for the December meeting out, so hopefully you guys have copies of those. You really talked about some things you thought were important, and we thought today the group could focus on talking about what are the next steps we need to do to kind of get through those things, whether it's, you know, we've heard about deep dive into the budget, is there a group of members that wants to do that? We've talked about, you know, uh, members that really want to um, focus on, you know, uh, revenue, potential revenue measure down the road. Is there a group that wants to talk about that? We did have the volunteer group meeting, but we want you guys to be able to talk about um, what uh, you want to see happen, and then how do we move forward with that? So how do you move forward and talk to the community? As that was a big discussion in December. So we'll kind of be handing it over to you all to have that discussion, and then um, we'll finish the meeting with closing and talk about kind of next steps. So is there anything outside of what's on that list that we think we need to allocate time for today? We can also figure it out as we move forward, right? <laughs> OK. Um, so I'm really going to stop talking. I'm going to invite uh, Harjo and Michelle up here. We're going to grab some pins. But we really want to. We have two mics. Um, we'll run the, the mics back around. We do want to keep this recorded. So um, we're going to pass it around. But several people um, did attend the workshop, and I'm assuming several others may have watched it um, online. So what were the things that stuck out for, for you all? Anyone want to start? It's going to be real fast me. It was the second mic Nobody's awake yet. <laughs> so I watched part of it in real time on TV and then watch the rest of it on video. And I appreciated the comments that the committee members made. I was expecting, however, more of a dialogue with the council, and they just kind of accepted what you said and moved on. At least that was my impression. And I thought one of the reasons for inviting the committee members to that meeting was to have a dialogue. So uh, mismatch of expectations, I guess, is how I'll summarize my reaction. Yeah. Um, I noticed that the council members, in terms of using their time effectively, didn't do 
do a very good job of it. And so I was wondering, when we have so many new uh, council members, what training they go through on how to perform their jobs? Sure. Yeah, so... Like, um, I'm not sitting in that chair. So, like, like uh, how to run a meeting, for instance. I noticed that a lot of the city council people would say a statement, and then someone would talk, and then they'd be looking at their notes. And so that caused a lot of problems. Yeah, I think we can note that. I think that the different council members have various levels of trainings on conferences and sessions that they've gone through. They've had kind of a facilitator, um, Sean Spano, who had different and been in previous council workshops and has talked about communication. We have two new council members that came in a year ago, so they're kind of figuring that piece out. We have a new mayor, so um, they they do they do work on that at different levels. I. I don't think I can tell you exactly how much training each one of the individuals had, but that was part of what the conversation was um, um, on the uh, during the workshop to try and improve some of that. And they did come up with some norms and rules. Um, but I remember the comments you made that said, "Hey, you know, we're talking too much instead of getting to the point." Basically, you said something like that. And yeah, but yeah. I've been training on how to run a meeting. <laughs> training on how to run a meeting effectively is something I, I think should be formalized because they waste so much of our time. Okay, we'll, we'll take note of that. I don't think we're going to answer that today and we'll keep moving on, but, but we'll take note of that. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't in the building. I watched it on, uh, on whatever the channel is. 17. The thing. Oh, Doug just said you watched it on channel 17. Okay. Anyway, bottom line, what got to me was um, Ms. Ramirez telling us finally what all the commercial entities are that are going in around town. Because having been planning commission for lots of years, I still get calls. Sue, what are they doing? And I don't know because I'm not on commission anymore. But the bottom line is that was very upbeat presentation and if we can capture that and market that so that the people in the city know what's going on I think it would be beneficial. Sue I'd love to share with you that just yesterday and um, if you want to bring it up live after I can we created a development projects web page where John Lang um, part of his team has created a phenomenal interactive map that shows all the different projects throughout town. So you can click on the image and it can give you a little bit of information to the project. Oh, cool. And then it's still in progress, but we're listing the various development projects with information. So you can sign up for notifying these on that specific project. You can look at the environmental, where it's been so far. And then as we update each project, we're gonna be putting that information on the web page. And so if you're only interested in Trammel Pro, then you can sign up and learn about Trammel Pro. If you wanna learn about Evergreen Village, you can sign up and learn about Evergreen Village. So I think that may also address some of those calls that you're getting. Right. Yeah, well, that'd be good for me. Thank you. That's hey, probably you know, good. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Can you repeat where we can find that? Oh, sure. Um, sorry, Nick. So it's, it's actually, if you click on government, and I'm happy to show you as well, if you click on government, over to the right is development projects. It's also, if you go by department, right under development services. And so we did, sit to Doug's point, we did send it out in the 401. It is a work in progress. We're adding projects as they come online. And we're including an explanation of the, the process they've been approved by, whether it's an administrative or planning commission council. Um, you know, this is really, we've heard the community. We've heard that they want more information. And they want us to reach out differently. So we're, we're taking that seriously. And we're taking different measures to address those concerns. Maybe it would be good if we just cut, we put that on like the parking lot for the end of the meeting if we want to demo yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just want to make a quick comment. I wanted to applaud that. I spoke with you a month ago. I was on the side last night and, and I was assuming that this team was the one putting it together. And I'm hoping that we influence some of that decision to kind of move that forward. But what I really liked about that side, along with the plot maps and all that comes with that, it also talked about some of the consequences to the decisions and the why. And I think that's very important. So my hope is that some of the discussion we've had here help lead towards that. That would be good because that's a part of our charge. And I don't want to applaud the effort. And I, I'm assuming it will be built out with more information as things progress. But I think it hopefully was an outcome of some of the discussions you not only heard from the community, but you heard from this group too. I also want to comment on the, on the budget meeting. I 
thought it was an interesting budget meeting as well. I do agree with Doug. I think the, you know, look for my co here to help us out. Hopefully, we represented the group well with that. So, uh, from that perspective. Uh, but I was looking for a little bit more of an exchange with the, the council uh, as, as it relates to feedback and potential direction and expectations or intentions they'd like to see. I do think we actually had even a stronger conversation with people in the audience, which actually became much more of a crucial conversation. We had, you know, it was kind of a pro and con at some level, but that's the type of exchange that we would hope to deliver in the future. So from a perspective of, and I unfortunately don't really have a chance to attend the one day, but I thought that exchange was, was, uh, was meaningful and was relevant and was good, and that's what we'd like to influence going forward. And I still think that we have some uh, effort, and today obviously is a part of that, is trying to understand where we fit in the community and how we actually stand you know, with some isolation with, with the council itself to make sure that we're not only relevant, but we're the trusted group to be able to disseminate information. So uh, that would be my thoughts. And me you know, my co here that help present the information. Well, I guess I would second all those thoughts. Um, I thought it was a good budget discussion. You know, I think the focus on fiscal feasibility or fiscal responsibility uh, is an important discussion. Um, you know, I guess I, I'm going to get on my soapbox up a little bit here. I've heard both the City Council and the Planning Commission at times say, for example, they don't want a distribution center. I would love both of those bodies to say that publicly. And I think that would be a good thing. And it would also give our developers guidance on what we expect in the city. Um, so that's my soapbox. And you said both of those bodies, did you mean Planning Commission and City Council? Yes. So I want to follow up on that. Edith repeatedly tells us that they're just following the economic development plan. And I know there was community input when John Lang started to put that together years ago because I sat in the audience and expressed my opinions. I don't think we necessarily understand what it means when the city has adopted a plan, how that drives what staff does, even if some of us don't want them doing what they're doing, they have been given direction because of those plans, because of the acceptance by the council. And maybe we need to spend a little time letting people know there's not as much flexibility as we think there is or that we would like to see. And maybe that's one of the ways that we begin to talk to people and help them understand is the, what you don't get as well as what you are getting. So that's just the thought. And, and maybe um, as we jump forward to later in the agenda, as we talk about some of the areas that different members of the group might be able to have that conversation at a, at a deeper level, that might be one of the good areas to really focus on. Very quickly, what drives the development plan is the zoning of the city. Every plot of land in the city limits has a zoning affixed to it. And several years ago, there's, there's a tract of land across from, um, what's the hamburger place on um, Condor over there? Anyway, that big tract of land. Mm -hmm. It has been subject to requests to rezone that at least three times while I was on planning commission for those 10 years. And, but it's the, the, the zoning that governs everything. If somebody comes in to us in the city with a potential development and they want it on XYZ plot of land and what they want to do fits that plot of land, the city can't say, oh, no, 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 we don't want to do that. The city has to listen to what they have to say and essentially work with them to get the best development possible. And I think that's probably what's at the base of the trend and clothing. Though I've not been part of it. And I, I agree. Just as a follow up, one of the things that I think both helps and hurts is that when you look at the strategic plan and they look out 20 years, 10 years, whatever, and you set the zoning and everything towards that to try and get that property, zoned property for what you think is going to come in, it changes. And a lot of times we don't change quick enough 
or we're forced to change. We do both. We're forced to change by what happens from the development standpoint, but also from a planning standpoint, we don't move quick enough sometimes because of those changes. We still think things are going to come and be the same thing. And it's driven a lot by outside things that we don't have any control over. So we have to be key and, and look at that both from both those views. And when when we try to have a piece of land that's developed and that's zoned a specific way to bring in whatever, let's say a, a building that's going to do high tech, and the developers go out and try and find something to fill that, and they can't, but they can find some other use for it, then they come back, and then that's where we get into some of those issues that we're talking about. Yeah. Just to, to that point, I, that's, I think, what's happening with the Measure A issue is that I just drove by a no one Measure A sign that said, bring wholesome, wholesome grocery stores to Morgan Hill or something. It's like, what? I don't really know what a wholesome grocery store is, but but I think that's code word for we want a Whole Foods, which would be great. We all want Whole Foods, even to talk to them, and they're not interested in going in to that site. And so I think that's a very real, we can continue to try to get, you know, more of a grocery store like that here, but the point is they don't want to go in on that site. The site's been open for many years and zoned that way, which is why we want to put hotels on that location. But the other thing I wanted to go back um, a little bit is is that it's not just the planning, the, the zoning, but also the general plan has legal implications. And that's the other thing I think that people don't understand is that that's a legally binding document. Um, and I think that that's a problem with the way municipalities are run is that we have these legally binding documents that were really our best guess at the time but things are changing. And so how do we work within those parameters to, to, to meet the immediate needs of the community? So I, I guess a couple things there. Uh, one, the Trammell Crow um, development does require rezoning for them to complete what they want to do. Uh, so I think we're gonna encourage the uh, Planning Commission not to do that, not to change the zoning. Um, the other thing is, as you look at all the developments that are uh, on the website and what they look like, there are a number of them that look like distribution centers. And again, I think we as a city should be able to say, we don't want a distribution center. We don't want that last mile. We don't want to be the distribution center for Silicon Valley here in Morgan Hill. And I think that statement would, again, give developers an understanding of, okay, this is what the city wants or doesn't want. So if I'm planning a distribution center, I better not go there. I wanted to quickly, just to um, Caitlin's point about Whole Foods, um, we were in a city school liaison meeting yesterday and we were sharing facts about Measure A. And one of the things that Leslie reminded us of is, is not only has that market, that site been marketed to Whole Foods for over 10 years, Whole Foods has told us that our population isn't growing at a rate that would sustain their business. And if it does, they'll consider it. But our RDCS is what has prohibited a place like Whole Foods coming. Now, with the loss of RDCS, perhaps in five years, if it stays suspended, we might have a chance. But that's something that I think is, is causing some confusion. We would love a Sprouts. We would love a Whole Foods. The city, staff, employees, residents. Um, but two hotels is not going to preclude a wholesome food store from coming. Maybe if I could just uh, add one, one thing for 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 Rick's comment, I think that ties to potentially that deeper discussion that we could have on, on that piece um, on just is this making some sort of statement, a blanket statement is we don't want any distribution, we don't want to be Silicon Valley's distribution center. How does that statement impact or align with the economic development blueprint, right? And it doesn't impact us, and if it does, and we want to make that decision, how do we make that decision to say we're still going to make that statement versus do we need to change our plan at all to do that? Because I think, I mean, Edith will tell you, we don't want to be the distribution center. We want, we want something else. We, we want better than that. But if we say that, it, does that impact us in any way? Um, and I think that's where maybe this group can get into that deeper discussion on that piece along with the other things we've talked about um, as it relates to the economic development. 
I know there's been a lot of talk about the type of bell that we have in Oregon Hill, and I think it's important to look forward to the changing demographics, the changing interests of the younger generations. When someone says, I, I want a Whole Foods, they might not mean they want a Whole Foods. There's a, a, a large dynamic going on in the United States right now where people are more global, they travel more. So, you know, to say it's impossible to have a grocery store there, I think you're misinterpreting what people say. I was in uh, Roseville, and there was a new grocery store that everyone was talking about, this Kiana. And they had foods from all over the world. People love food. We're in an area where people come here to eat artisan foods. So I think that to say we want to set this aside for a Whole Foods type grocery store might be missing an opportunity if we neglect that. Yes, if we have those hotels, we don't have, we won't have a Whole Foods, right? Wrong. But maybe, <laughs> but maybe it's worthwhile not to have hotels if people don't want it. Because maybe in the future we can get higher quality industries in there. Like, like I don't want a two-star hotel. Maybe Morgan Hill, if we want to be a tourist destination, we have to have hotels for people who want to come here and spend some time drinking wine. That means a three-star or four-star hotel. So I think that the importance of understanding what people want is really critical to getting the vision that we want of working Hill. Okay, John Person, yeah. Yeah, so um, touching a lot of topics that come up here. One, so measure A and hotel versus grocery. To me, this is a doing lot by lot planning and zoning at the ballot is a terrible idea. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know all else for it, but it's a terrible idea. So to take this one in particular, there's already the Evergreen Village development going on on the other side of Cochrane with 11 lots, one of which the developers hope is to bring a wholesome food store into. So far they have been unsuccessful. It's zoned it's planned and, and they're still working on that for that. So there, there's this false notion out there right now that on Measure A, the choice is that's the one piece of land where we could get an international market or whatever, or a hotel that it's a binary choice. That simply is not correct. And it's why we're not organized to do lot by lot development decisions on a ballot, the majority of the people voting on it, whether they're voting yes or no, they don't have to, they don't have any interest in spending the time to understand everything that staff, planning commission, city council, all the arguments, all the public meetings, groups like this. It's just, it, it is a wholly inappropriate way to do lot by lot planning. The city will, any, any community will grind to a halt. So that particular one, in my view, and also our view as a chamber, so I'll speak for the chamber, is you know, it's a case of a couple of competitors don't want a new competitor, and they're using whatever means they can to try and prevent that, including telling people, if you get this hotel, you don't get the whole foods you've always wanted. It, it's just not accurate or not true. Now, the question of what kind of groceries, you know, strategically do we want long-term? Great, con great con conversation for groups like this and other, and other groups, and then how do you get that? Measure A is not a hotels or Trader Joe's or Aldi's or Whole Foods or Andronico's or you know, pick Sprouts, pick your, or uh, Founders Market, another real interesting one coming out of Monterey. A lot of fascinating grocery concepts. I really hope Morgan Hill gets one of them. This lot in that particular spot isn't even a great place for them. Where the current Trader Joe's is, is a terrible place for a Trader <laughs> Joe's. They're making it work and I go there all the time, but, but that was not their their their, their first choice. So anyhow, it's kind of off the soapbox um, on that. To the point about the distribution, so if, you know, if, if there was a statement that Morgan Hill is not a does not seek to be a last mile distribution hub, uh, you know, having been very involved in the economic development blueprint, but I, that is not in conflict with anything in there around manufacturing. It's advanced manufacturing and innovation industries. 
Um, last mile distribution is neither of those things. So it's more a question that there are certain places where that is or isn't allowed by right. Um, storage, you know, like one up on Cochrane was allowed by right. Not my favorite use for that piece of land. It's allowed by right. It's a free economy. People get to do what they want. Not a lot of jobs. Basically, storage continues to mean we all have bought too much stuff and have too much junk and we can't keep it at home, so we find a place to store it. I resemble that comment. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, so I, I could go on and on. But just about that's the two points. Of fuzzy thinking. Because I hear people say, advanced manufacturing, advanced manufacturing. Okay, what is advanced manufacturing? Clean. A pretty good. What is that? Oh, what, kind of, what kind of technology? I, I think. I'd be happy to answer the question, or, or, or I defer to my, to my colleague over here who does that for a living. Well, then, love you all. So obviously, I work at Paramed, and Paramed is an advanced manufacturer. We build uh, medical devices and life science instrumentation. So we'll build something that's 400 pounds, and it's huge, and it takes a single cell and looks at the DNA and we'll either diagnose That's cancer, right? Prior to the machine. Okay, I'm I'm a development engineer. The last thing I worked on was micro technology for medical devices. Micro technology for medical devices. I know advanced manufacturing. Advanced manufacturing comes from people who are doing like oh machines who are giving you a service. A little guy, a little guy in his building who's doing like maybe a 3D printer or something like that. When we talk about advanced manufacturing, we're not talking about Johnson & Johnson, right? I used to work at Johnson & Johnson. You could be. Could be. Yeah. Why not? Sure. Because companies like Johnson & Johnson like to be uh, located closer to transportation hubs. There's no J&J &J down there. But the point is that when we say that advanced manufacturing, we really need to know what we're talking about and how it fits in with Morgan Hill. You know, some of the most in-demand technologies in the United States are not advanced manufacturing. The last report I read said that upholstery people are really in demand because of the way technology is today. Customization is easier than ever. That's where advanced manufacturing is taking us. It's taking us to the small person being able to make a good living using like 3D printers to do pottery or something like that. We miss opportunities in Morgan Hill when we don't take the time to really understand what we're saying and how it really impacts an individual's ability to make money. I just I, before we get too far away from it, I just really want to quickly address the, the two star and three star hotel issue that you brought up. Um, so I, I think it's really important to, to recognize that this is not something that, that the people sitting on the dais can say, but we do have a problem in the city with some of the existing hotels operating as slum wards and having people stay over periods of time. And you can talk privately to any of our police officers about this. This is not, again, not something that, that it, it's a different kind of conversation to have. And one of the, the hotels that's really the, the worst actor in this issue is the hotel that's leading the charge against Measure A. The hotel is not close to being a three-star hotel. I don't even know if I would call it a two-star hotel. And the hotels that are trying to go into that space it's not like it's a nebulous idea of what the hotels would be. We know what the hotels are. And there are at least three star hotels that want to go into that place. So part of the problem of the occupancy of the hotels here is that we don't, we, we, we need hotels for the business travelers during the, the week. They can't stay at the hotels that are operating as, you know, flop houses. Or, and, and not, and I don't want to be disrespectful to people that are living there. It's also a housing issue because they can't find a place to live. And so that's part of the reason that we don't have the rooms during the week for the, for the business travelers. And so, so I agree. What, what we should, my ultimate goal is that we're working on tourism, that we're bringing people here to do wine tasting, and we're bringing people here to taste our fresh produce, as you brought up. Um, but 
there is a need during the week for business travelers to stay at the Marriott's and the Sheridan's of the world, and those are exactly the kind of hotels that are trying to go into that place. But according to the developer, that wasn't the type of hotel that they were taking. So, so just uh, just to kind of finish the conversation, so we were reviewing the council workshop, yeah. we <laughs> and this is a good conversation. I just want to be really careful of time because I think we want to use this uh, meeting today. At least the idea is to step into some of these conversations with the people that are interested in the various areas. So as we finish the meeting today, we can form some different groups to have these deeper conversations and produce things. So um, we, I think we keep going on the conversation for maybe five, five more minutes um, and then kind of bring it back. Wait, I wasn't done. <laughs> okay, okay, and, so then the, the, and then the second part of the conversation is that I, I feel like it was glossed over, but I totally agree that, that, that times are changing and the kinds of places that I want to be shopping at Berkeley Bowl for my produce. I want to be shopping at a place that has exotic produce, that has different kinds of produce, that is more plant-based. Like, I'm of that generation, so I totally understand what you're saying. I didn't mean to say that, that I don't understand what the need is. My point was that that, that particular plot of land has been open for 10 years. Whole Foods doesn't want to go there. And we are we have created, what is the name of the center that's, that, um, on Cochrane that we, is it Evergreen Village? Village? Is, that, that part of what we have approved is that that will be a walkable, very different looking shopping center than anything that you've seen in Mormon Hill so far. That it's the kind of place where people sit and they sit outside and drink a cup of coffee. And part of what we've included in that is one of these uh, grocery stores that is more modern, if for lack of a better word, and more organic and more local produce and that sort of thing. But to John's point, it, just because we want it doesn't mean that it is a reality, but I think that nobody from a city perspective is missing the concept that that is something that's desired in the, in the community, and so I didn't mean to say that. And maybe just to wrap up the hotel comments, um, I know the developer very well who's doing that, and he has Hilton signed up and he has Marriott signed up. So those are the two flags. They're, they're not the top of the line Marriott or Hilton, we agree. They're like a three star. Yeah. Well, you've got but they are signed up. We're not a downtown. Serve that high right now. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back to the workshop. One thing, and I was only there for our session a couple hours around that, but one thing that stood out to me that we haven't discussed so far is one of the councilmen said after the development committee presentation, uh, well, We'd like to define a process of, you know, I'm paraphrasing, ensuring that items that change come back to the council and get a new look or a new decision. And that, in my view, just felt flat. There wasn't a commitment. It was just something stated, and I didn't hear any commitment. I haven't seen anything come out of that. And so that's something that concerned me. I thought it was an incredibly valid point. And I haven't seen any closure on that, but maybe I've missed something. And are you talking about specifically project plans that change? And yes. Like so, so I think that can be wrapped up into the bigger conversation we have because I think the focus, I mean, there, there are a residential piece, but a lot of this, the focus that I think people are talking about are on the non-residential projects. Okay. Um, and with the residential projects, it's a little bit harder to, uh, for us to do a lot of anything now with the, with the state <laughs> But I think that can be tied into this conversation that 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 we have on this on developing um, everything from understanding the zoning and how that impacts what you're talking about because it's it's easy to say logistically, hey, we don't have anything that changes that comes back to council, but we still have to follow our own laws and the state laws. So getting through that piece is why I think there wasn't an easy black and white answer to say there was something. But I think that's the conversation we can keep going. Quickly, and I, I know you've been waiting patiently. Um, we, I think, I think our planning team is also looking at doing. We're going to put some information on our website about SB 330 and what the implications are. But it very dramatically changes our ability because it puts very strict timelines on projects. And so the ability the city council will have to re-review and review and for planning commission is going away. And so, to very much to Chris's point, I think that's why that might have fallen a little bit flat. But we're going to be educating the community because many people are asking for the same thing. We hear it. But right now, our hands are going to be tied. 
On the residential side. So, so yeah, on the, the residential side. side. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, think shoe pals. Yeah, so what I see happening, and we'll find out after March 3rd election, is there's going to be something called Decision by Facebook. You've got all this education that we should be doing. The city spent time and planning on the hotels, and a lot of thought has gone into it. Yet all it takes is one little ad on Facebook that says, we want a wholesome thing. And everyone's going to go, oh yeah, so I'm going to vote no on A. And it's, it's a real bummer that... That's the way things are happening now. People are pressed for time, right? And information, they think, oh, okay, I'm going to go with that. And they don't put thought into really what's the behind of it. So we'll see. That's where we're hoping this group is able to inform and educate and, and uh, follow up on those kinds of things. Because we as staff can't do We can't do that, so. Okay, so we're going to finish up kind of, uh, if everyone's good, close out kind of the workshop comments and kind of keep moving on with the agenda. I want to make one more comment. Just one last comment. I think what uh, is really galvanizing uh, us and other people in the city is the committee that was formed on responsible growth. I think that I don't agree with a lot of the things that they've done or that they're trying to do, but I do agree that it's a voice that needs to be heard, that more people need to understand, and this is helping people understand the pros and the cons of a lot of different issues that are happening in town. And to see that happening is really good because I, as, as well as Doug, attend many of the city council and planning commission meetings and there's nobody else there. Already. And to see this happening it is really great. We're attending meetings now on a regular basis, which really brings warmth to my heart that more people are becoming engaged in the community. And that's good. And I think the total outcome will really add value to the community long term. But we need to get through this process. And it's a difficult process we're trying to get through right now because we're, we're our back is against the wall in a lot of respects. So that's why this committee's here, and that's why I appreciate all of the different input from the different groups because it's important to get that known and to maybe make those changes that we need to make short term, long term for the betterment of our total city. Okay, real, real quick. Okay. The city made certain uh, recommendations to the city council to make communication between the city and the community and the city council more effective. And I was wondering how that process went. If you implemented any changes? Well, I think it Michelle's kind of talked out. about some things that are happening. Right. Yeah. Are you talking specifically the uh, communication and engagement as it relates to? Uh, decision making process on development projects or no this is uh in the budget review meeting with the city council when they were talking about you know agenda items changing things like oh. that the city had certain requests yeah i, I mean they updated the policies um yeah. a little bit so just my knowledge i think most of it remained constant um uh shall we want to add anything else to that i think Proposals, but yeah, yeah. yeah, so we, so you were there, and I think you were there for both full days, or yeah. most of it. So the council had many discussions about how they're going to run effective meetings, how they're going to communicate yeah, more clearly. Mm -hmm. But we have policies, so we had taken red line policies, I think is what you're referring I'm, to. No, I'm not. I'm okay. talking about you had talked to the city council about agenda items. Sometimes the city council requested information. Future. And, Future. Yeah. 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 Things like that. And so they chose to not change their process. So it's the city council's process, and they have the choice of how they want to do that. So their process has not changed. So for future items, they will mention it at the end of a meeting. Um, what did change a little bit on that front, though, is that rather than staff spending hours and hours putting together a report and doing research to bring it back to find out that maybe the whole council doesn't want to proceed that way, you know, Renee Spring, they say, Michelle, I would like to know more about mobile cancer screenings. And we will put together a very brief report that's really a discussion item for council to have a discussion about that. And then they can say, yes, a majority of us, we want to spend our resources and our time looking into mobile cancer screenings. Or a majority of them may say, you know what, Renee, we respect what you have to say, we've heard you, but we really don't want staff spending the time researching that right now, we have other priorities. So it did change a little bit, and hopefully we'll see some results to that. Okay. Sorry, sorry, it's taking me a minute. 
Yeah, so uh, we want to take just a brief moment because during the, the council workshop there was a, a volunteer discussion that, that came up and we said, hey, what, what, did, what can volunteers to really do to impact the, the funding gap? And we had some lively, short, short time-wise debate, but lively debate during the workshop. So we held a meeting with um, members of the, the group. I think we had six members there. And um, anyone who was there, uh, maybe Nancy, do you want to give a summary? Of what? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, but also, there's some lots of sources. Yeah. So basically, I think someone in this that was with, um, at, at that council meeting said that we should perhaps um, rely on volunteers to do some work around the city to help with the funding. Yeah. So then we had a special meeting like a week or two ago, and we talked about pros and cons, and if that could really work. Anybody else might add to that? So, <clears throat> so my interest was basically one of my soapbox issues is the city doesn't tell us enough about what they do. And if you don't go to PRC meetings once a year, you will have never heard about anything about the volunteer activity, even though it's featured in the 411 every week at the end. You know, wonderful opportunities to volunteer for us. We don't know what that means. We don't know what the city gets out of it. More importantly, from my point of view, we don't know what our residents get out of the fact that we have people you know, participating as volunteers. County Parks has a very healthy program, and once a year they do a presentation and they use some nationally recognized figure for the value of a volunteer hour, and they have thousands of hours of people volunteering, and you know, that's real dollars that, that the city, uh, the county in this case, doesn't spend to get things done that people want done. So, my interest was, was mostly in trying to uh, get us to think about other things the city does that we could really appreciate, that our residents would appreciate to get us, get them on our side, as it were. Um, so that was my interest in it, but it, it turned out into a very uh, well uh, led by Mr. Guioni explanation of how volunteering works in the city and considerable interest on the part of everyone but me to become a volunteer. <laughs> I thought it was a really good meeting because it talked about the dispersion of the volunteers that are already working with the city. We had 100 uh, working on going in the city, 30 plus ongoing, um, that we provide administrative support for the city. And one of the things that I thought was interesting was that there was no person who was a, a coordinator of volunteering services so that the use of volunteers in the city can't be deployed strategically because you need someone to oversee that particular person. And earlier in this process, we, we know that the city is really short on a bunch of people to do the city's business. And so it seems that efficient use of volunteers and increasing use of volunteers is really hinged on having someone to manage those people. Oh, and Chris, you said you were going to summarize all this. I don't know if you had time. Yeah, no, so, um, so we talked about next steps. So we're in the process of developing a more detailed fact sheet and really um, um, going to Doug's point, um, using kind of the county parks model to really put a story together on how much our volunteers for the city currently actually do and then really identifying the areas where we'd really like to have volunteers and go so we can kind of um, itemize that for for the group to use going forward and use it as something to hopefully explain that we're we're doing pretty well as compared to many com communities using volunteers um, so we're working on that. We have not had time yet because our team is, uh, our, our two key volunteer people are also in the midst of budget process. We, but we'll, we should have that in the next couple of weeks, a draft for the, for the whole group to look at uh, that really talks about you know, how much our volunteers do, how many hours, potential uh, value of all those hours, as well as the areas um, we're not as strong in. So I don't know if anyone else had any more comments on that, Brian? To, to that point, the, the different groups where the volunteers operate underneath, they manage the volunteers and the volunteer uh, cadre and hours. So like the police department, as an example, has a lot of volunteers that people don't know about. 
They spend a tremendous amount of time and hours on a monthly basis. The CERT program, the volunteers and policing, all those different things that take some of the things that the police may have to do and leave them of doing some of those things. So the hours and the time spent is a very, I think when we do that type of looking how many hours there are and how many people, it's going to be a tremendous amount of money that's saved overall in the different departments that are operating that realm. So to the point, yes, it's going to take time to get it done, but once it is done, I think people will understand the ramifications of not having those volunteers. And I just had one thing that our group really, because there was some discussion, can we get more volunteers and can that really eliminate the need for um, additional funding? And when we really went through that, the answer really was in the detail, I think the group agreed was no. Um, and the very short answer to that was, you know, over $2 million of that is pavement work that we can't even do with our own city staff that we contract out with pe for people to do major capital projects per state guidelines and the other pieces running a fire station which we're not in uh, a rural volunteer fire station we have the expectations as you guys went through on the response times as well as police so we know as Brian said without these volunteers we'd be in a heck of a lot of hurt but we don't know that there's a way to expand the program to really cover the funding gap that we're we're looking for with police fire and infrastructure I think the group agreed on that, right? Okay. And Chris, just to button up this conversation, I just want to, one food for thought is one of the other projects I'm working on is we've been awarded a grant um, to help with the census count and specifically to reach our hard to reach populations. So our single mothers, our children under five, our non-English speaking community, homeless, etc. And we need volunteers. We need volunteers to help us as staff and that's a part of the grant requirement. We've been blasting it, we've put it out, and we've gotten nobody. And so I think volunteers is amazing, and maybe we're, we need to be blasting it in different ways. If you have ideas, please do email me, share me, pull me aside. But I think, too, the volunteers, sometimes they, it has to be something they're interested in doing. And we have lots of work we can have people do, but it isn't necessarily something that they always want to volunteer their time for. And that's the thing that at least I'm struggling with right now and looking for, for volunteers. Well, you, if, if I could just add to that, and that, that is saying you need volunteers without any sense of the person as to what they're getting into or whether they have the right skill set. I mean, I read your ads and I say that's nice and then I go on to the next one. Um, because I know there's no linkage between me and the, what you're asking me to do. In so, general so or you, specifically to the census workers? Well, I, in, in general, but I'm actually reacting to your need for volunteers and not getting them, and your message doesn't have a hook for me. Okay. So just one person's opinion. All right, uh, I'll quickly uh, jump in on the budget schedule. Uh, on, on the screen here, we're highlighting some key um, budget dates, especially as they relate to uh, the community engagement uh, in the community. So we, we got two uh, schedules. So the first one's going to be March 21st, which is a Saturday, 9 o'clock. Um, we're still finalizing where the locations are going to be. We're hoping we can get out of this building and actually out into the, into the community. So Michelle's going to be working. Hopefully, we can secure some locations. Um, so, so that will be coming up, and then we'll communicate that out as we have a more uh, firm location. So really, the first two meetings are to get input on the budget development process as the departments are out there, uh, developing the budget, uh, kind of provide an input of what the process looks like, and uh, what are some of the key decisions that uh, are going to be going into uh, putting the budget together. So we'll gather up all that feedback, uh, and then we'll go ahead and incorporate uh, as appropriate to the recommended budget, which is tentatively uh, scheduled to be made available to the community early April, and we'll get presented to the council on April 22nd. Um, so following that will be, again, a presentation to the community on April 30th, uh, really talking about what's in the budget, what's programmed in, getting feedback at that point, uh, 
uh, we'll have our budget uh, balancing acts tool available at the same time, so we'll uh, do a lot of engagement and exercises uh, on that. And all that feedback compiled together, we'll go back to the city council and they hold their uh, budget workshop on May 15th and present the recommended budget, our uh, feedback that we gather from the community workshops, and uh, really make some key decisions at that point uh, that will ultimately result a, in a uh, budget being adopted on June 17th. So, any questions on the budget component? So I haven't a clue what you're actually going to try and accomplish and what you're going to present with these workshops. Are you going to give you know broad categories of dollars? Are you going to discuss decision packages? Are you going to talk about well the department? You said you're going to talk about process. You know what am I supposed to say? I only want 75% of the general fund to be spent on public safety. Uh, it's just for what you said, I'm not interested. The other thing is... There's no hook. There's no hook. No hook. For me. No doubt. No doubt. Um, and, and the other thing is, you're making a mistake in not getting your budget tool out early. We should be having something that people can play with to try out their ideas and understand what, what your choices mean to us. Uh, okay, I'll go ahead and uh, have you I mean, come in and I'll kind of summarize it. So, same idea. Well, how are you enticing people to come to this? Do you want, how many people do you want? How are you going to market this? Why would I want to give up my Saturday morning to come out? Secondly, do other cities do this? Are we just being a hands-on concierge service? Or do other cities, are you required by law to do this? Or are we just doing this out of the goodness of our Mormon home heart? Um, I think, uh, I would say it, it's, it's part both. Um, I think it's good practice, and also for knowing that council has adopted a community engagement and communication as a strategic priority, and we have heard, uh, you know, time and again that uh, the community really wants to be involved. And so, you know, one of the part key key part where decisions are made is what is the budget process outside of the the day to day uh, or the monthly meetings that the, that the council does hold. So I think. Um, so that's one. The second is really, as we have identified, that there are these challenges as we look up into the future, um, while us as professionals can probably uh, make a recommendation, but I think really the value is hearing input from the community uh, from, say, the unfunded needs perspective, right? So, so we did a, a exercise with the Work Leadership Morgan Hill class where we demoed did a very soft demo of the, uh, the tool, and uh, and I think Michelle was there, and I think it was fairly uh, uh, successful. So what we're doing is, as we prepare to come out to the, these meetings, uh, we really want to be able to make sure we deliver a good product. Uh, it uh, it helps us and the council be able to grab what exactly it is what we're looking for. So as as we're we're, at, you know, we're finding these things, I think we'll have more information available as to what's expected, what will be the agendas on these meetings. And, uh, and to Doug's point, I think, point well taken, I think uh, we'll go ahead and probably try to add a hook. And if we can put together an agenda and make that available, exactly what's going to be covered in each of these meetings. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that as well. Well, then maybe just adding on. Tell us what the hook is. <laughs> Tell us what the hook is for you. Tell us what would make you come to that. What will make, if you're out there in the community, tell us what you think it'll, it'll make members join us. Tell us. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I had a different comment. Um, but so it's sort of, sort of related. So um, I, I hope that I'm not, I hope this is on topic because there's nothing that I dislike more than people getting off topic in a meeting. Um, but <laughs> but um, this is, I wanted to bring up a comment that, that Doug had made in email um, at some point, and I think that this is all, and this is this also goes back to something that Nick said in one of our very first meetings, is that I feel like what we're missing is sort of what is our overarching long-term 
communication goal and communication strategy. So we're, we're talking about all of these issues piecemeal, but there's no reason for that because to me, it's all the same message, whether we're talking about Measure A or whether we're talking about the budget or whether we're talking about SB30, whether we're talking about Triple Crows, it's all what is our what is our overarching goal and what is our overarching communication message and what should that be? And I think that um, we kind of dance around it a little bit and part of that is because you guys have, um, you, you can't come out and say it for us as much as you would like to in some situations if it involves uh, measure A or if it involves campaigning in any way and I think that part of that is the frustration with the breakdown between what staff can do and what we have to do. But I think the overarching message is not, you should go for measure A because it won't cost you anything. It's not, um, you, we don't want distribution centers, but we want some nebulous job creating something here. It's whether we like it or not, the city is changing. We don't know how many new residents we're gonna get. We have seven to $10 million budget shortfalls. We literally have to do everything that we can to bring in revenues if we wanna keep the quality of life that we have here, but we want to do it in a smart way. We want to do it in a way, we want to control the way that that happens. So the budget isn't just, here's how much money you have, put it together in a way that makes sense. It's look at what our challenges are so that you can see when we come to you and say, we need TOT dollars, that you understand what we're talking about. When we say we need to staff the new fire station, you understand what the, the constraint job constraints are. So I think that I think that Nick in the very, very, very beginning talked about this a little bit, that we even the way that the information has been presented to us has been in sort of a piecemeal issue. But I think that maybe one of the subgroups needs to be what is the hook? What is the two-year message? How do we break it down for a Facebook community that's going to look at one piece of information? Um, I think we're starting to get there. I think one of the great things Yvonne brought up at a meeting was how do we get that basket visual, right? Of I think at one of the meetings you said we used to talk about my dollars at the grocery store used to get me this before it gets me this now. We're starting to see some of those graphics from the city on the two-page graphic that you did for Measure A on the second page. There was some great stuff about the um, staffing issues that we could address with the TOT dollars. I think that we maybe need to put together something even shorter than that that encompasses more of these issues um, and more of a long-term goal. And so every time you meet the community, whether it's a budget workshop or whether it's engaged or whether it's, it's always the same message. And it's, to me, it's not vote for measure A because it won't cost you anything. It's, this is the least we have to do. This is on a scale of all of the things we have to do to where to get to where we need to be in two years. This is the, the this is the thing that's going to cost you the least. But it's only step one. Keep in keep in mind that we're also going to do have to do a tax measure in November, and I think it should be part of the same conversation. So sorry if I. Maybe just a question. So I think right on point, and I think this group can take the lead on doing that. How would you summarize if you were putting together a subgroup or a group mm -hmm. that is going to do that? How would you, what would you call that? Because I think, I mean, it's communications, um, but, and I think it's important. I think, I think coming from you and this group and putting that together is going to be much more beneficial and we can help provide a background to help put together, but coming from you all, that's going to be that's going to be better. So how would how would we describe that? I mean, it's it's. And I just made up two years because I'm thinking. I mean, but like, it's, it, it should have started two years ago and been right. two years. So, um, but it's but it's you know it, for for us for this group to me it's what our mission is. Right. And so it's it's almost like here we are, however many months into it, we we need to take a step back and say. What's the end goal? It's, so I don't know. It's like. Why are we still here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, but it, I mean you, you've got to look right there. Everybody is stressed in terms of money. And so when you go to San Jose, you see these 
signs that say, oh, you're sitting at work here. We have this new building. Hey, we need to save money. We need to have something that says to the people of Oregon Hill, you don't want your sales tax, you don't want your taxes to go up, come to this meeting and tell us how. You know, that's our hook. We know that we spend X amount of money cleaning up trash. We should have signs that say, the city saves X amount of money if you put your trash in the trash can yourself. You know, it's, it's like the hook is money. It, the fact is that the city does a lot for us that maybe we could save money by doing ourselves. It's like, you know, parenting your kids, you know? I went to these people's houses and their kids just left their stuff on the table after they ate, you know? It's like, that's like the city. You've got these people messing things up and the city has to clean it up. That's our hope. I've just said, I think you, you earlier you pointed out a very good point that, you know, the city, while we'd love to be able to do all this communication and to do that, I think the message we can, while we can craft it, I think we're limited on resources. As you, you've probably seen as part of this process, I think Maureen time and again has highlighted that uh, while we hope to be able to deliver a product and, and spend a little resources, a lot of other things that are in the background that pull a lot of our professional staff in other directions. Uh, that's what we're really hoping that this group can also, not just this group, but also the community can help us, you know, set, send that message out. So, good point, so. Decisions today define life tomorrow. <laughs> I <got you. laughs> Excellent discussion. I appreciate all the points. Thinking about the budget, I would look, what I see up here, I would call it bottoms up process, all the departments, all the needs, all that. But what we don't have as a community, and it's hard to do for any kind of, is a coherent tops down. So in the context of the city, it would be, okay, a city of our size at our approximate growth rate, what do we know we need tops down? Like you're gonna need X dollars of uh, police fire and EMS. You're gonna need Y, you're gonna need that. So in, in, in business and in nonprofit organizations, often one of the most difficult processes to go through is a tops down budget. What does it take? And then you figure out the pieces under it. And um, it, it, the typical governmental processes, uh, even a lot of typical company processes, never actually do that. What did we do last year? What do we need to change? Where are we going to find it? And this process here is that. But if we're going to two, three, four, five, ten years from now, not crash and burn, but be a healthy, balanced, vibrant city, there are things we all know need to happen differently. And I think that's that uh, different. My way of saying Caitlin's point. You know, what is the plan? We have many plans. We have park plans. We have public safety. We have plans like all over the place. And, and, and hundreds of thousands of dollars, thousands of hours go to developing all these plans. But whose job is it to create the plan that integrates and resources all the plans? It, 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 and our, frankly, our system of government is not well organized for that. You've elected coming and going, and campaigns and, and priorities coming and, and going. But so, to me, that's the need and the opportunity is there some way to, uh, and some communities will call it a community visioning process. There's different, some have done it well, some have done it not well. Maybe this group can spearhead that. But what's the overall plan? Not how do we get through this next adoption of the next two year budget cycle with, you know, with, 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 with the least pain possible. That's kind of what, what's on the, really, the process the city's going through. But how, and, and can we? Or is it like, it's typical in our society, we wait until a crisis and then react. So that's really the mission of this group in my mind. Are we going to be that rare bird that gets ahead of a crisis and actually averts it and gets very little credit because you don't get a lot of credit for putting out a fire that never started? Or are we going to be a typical community that bumbles along, meets on Saturdays, talks and worries and each has their own little kind of pet projects and eventually there will be a turn in the economy, things will crash and burn, you have to turn the police department over to the sheriff, you know, all the dramatic stuff that happens. So I, we're, we're, in my view, trying to be a crisis aversion team, and, and that's a hard 
job to communicate. It doesn't go over well on Facebook. Uh, Facebook is great for, don't you want a whole food say no to the hotel? Well, that, that's ridiculous, but that, that is kind of the Facebook world. So, so can, can we prevent a disaster? <laughs> Not a great sales fit, but that, that, I think that's what we're here trying to do in our own way. Thank you.
general plan that we put together. But is it exactly what you know you're talking about, John? Mm -hmm. And maybe part of that is because this general plan gets updated not very often. We make a big effort when we do update it. So we update the general plan here, then we update all these master plans, economic blueprint, they're all supposed to be in support of the general plan. General plan doesn't necessarily tell you, you know, how the budget's gonna work out every year. So it's visionary in nature, and as Doug said, our park and recreation master plan is vision, more visionary in nature, and we move things back and forth, where our utilities master plans are more specific in nature because they drive our these studies, but the city does a lot of different things in those planning documents, depending on what you're planning, might be more visionary because you don't want to tell everyone who walks through the door, we can't do anything for parks and recreation because we have no money. Um, so we use grants, we do those things. I do want to jump back and let Steve uh, make a comment, but just wanted to time check and keep us moving because I think we have more scheduled things to talk about and then we want to, want to summarize too. So we'll keep moving on just a few more comments on the schedule and then we'll get into the uh, overall conversation. First, yeah, so I just want to say, like Brian's uh, comment about getting the right message out there, I think that what I'm not seeing is an agreement on what that message should be and exactly how we expect that message to reach people. I think that that's kind of where things are falling short. You know, I, I'm getting a lot out of these meetings and uh, I don't see it disseminating much beyond my immediate circle. You know, trying some social media, and sometimes I feel like I'm the only voice. So, you know, if we have maybe some agreement and go out as a team and try to deliver that message, it might be more effective. That's all I want to say. That's very much the case earlier. Yeah, I, I, I agree so much, and I feel like. It's whatever that message is, every single time we have community contact, we repeat the message over and over and over and over again so that it becomes as ubiquitous as we need a wholesome food market. Um, I, I would like um, to suggest that we have a subcommittee called the Bottom Line Communication Subcommittee. I just give it a minute to like <laughs> um, and since we probably should have done this two years ago, I will meet coffee, meet for coffee with Nick sometimes this week. If anybody else wants to get together, then after the meeting we can sit and come up with the time to do that. And I think that we can try to quickly hash out sort of, in the very least, a couple sentences to start with of what our message is. And then from there, I'd like to look at some of what the city has done, some of what the city has put out as far as um, graphics go, and kind of pick and choose some graphics I think that we can put together on a one-page sheet that maybe talk about the budget and what our needs are. Um, one piece of feedback I gave Christina about the two pages that we put together on Measure A is that they're great, but the very top of the first page is all the map of where the hotels would go, and if you're scrolling through Facebook, or if you're scrolling through social media, and you don't flip to the second page, that's all you're gonna see. And so the best graphics you did are on the second page. And so we need to come up with something that's smaller and tighter, um, but I think we can start hashing some of that stuff out. So Caitlin, okay, one more. One more after that. Um, can we go back to this, maybe this helps launch into the next conversation. Can we go back to this slide here? Yeah, there you go. I'm a fire stand to get it. Can't see it. But you can't see it. I just put it. This is not the end of the day. Oh, okay. But part of the presentation for me was a little bit of a disconnect between the conversation that started on the left and how it really ended up on the right. And as we talked about relevance to the residents and driving people, whether it's to a budget meeting or to other type of sessions, if we have not connected where we are as far as the maturity curve over the next two to five years, there's no relevance. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of the issue we have. If you take a look at the city council ongoing priorities, the 2020 priorities, they did at least consolidate some of those and cut those down. So 
but there is just so much uncertainty on really what that means at a resident level that it's hard to connect and cascade what that means as it relates to budget, what it relates to vision, what it relates to the various initiatives we have going on. And I think if we're going to try to drive individuals, say, to a budget meeting, if we don't connect the relevance to this, it's hard. Now, we can do a part of that, but that is a city's responsibility to be able to align vision to where the priorities are and how that relates to the operating tool, which is the budget. And I think we're conflating some of that at some level. I mean, the, the budget itself is just an operating discipline, an operating tool to be able to measure and monitor how you're performing these strategic priorities. It's not end-all, end-all, right? It's a way to be able to track our performance over the course of one year, two years, or three years. But I'm still having some difficulty trying to connect the vision of where those priorities are, how it relates to what we would call the sustainability in, in, the, you know, in the city, to what we're going to, how we're going to transform the city to truly the strategic priorities for the next few years. So I think we can work on that through communication, but we're going to need help understanding from the city council directionally where are we going from a city council perspective. So we can understand the message, we may agree or disagree with that, but then we can come up with communication to inform the residents on really what it means. So this really brought me back after the discussion this morning on some of the difficulties and some of the uncertainties as it relates to relevance for us, not just as a community, but community as a whole, on really where we're going as far as direction. Because there's just too much confusion between a lot of those priorities, and it's just hard to determine what does it really mean to me and how do I use that to move forward. So I don't know if that's helpful for the next conversation, but I think that one subcommittee would be a help but we still have to be able to connect the dots on where we're going directionally from the city council perspective to help with that. Yeah, and I, I think that's a, a really good point. Um, but I think some of, to your point, you, you, as you build that, we can ask those questions. And if there really are some really big policy type questions and figure out, hey, what exactly do you mean? We have five council members, and so, um, Christina's challenge and the team's challenge when you're putting this together is finding a document that works for all five council members when they might not all have the same exact piece. But if we have, to your point, some specific things to say, hey, we need to know what we're going here to say. We're not going to be San Jose's distribution center. Is that, is that a statement? Is that a statement that the council can agree on? Um, are there other things and other details? Where are we going? That's the Two out of the five as it relates to their opinion, that's fine because that's just a social conversation. But eventually, they have the obligation to be able to come to consensus with that. That provides direction for the residents of the Morgan Hill to say, okay, I know the line of sight. Whether I agree with it or not, that's a, that's a different conversation. But unless I have consensus of that line of sight, it's hard for us to be able to react to that. And that's part of what I heard from the council meetings on at least the day I spent. They're still having difficulty on norming themselves together to understand common ground to make a collective decision to set that those those priorities straight. We can help with that at some level, providing input and a conscious on where the city is going, but the city has council has responsibilities to that. So we're going to have to work together to be able to push that, uh, and that's going to be part of our charge. So I, I'm sorry, but I just you can't let that off the hook because they're there for a reason, and they're going to have to come together as as a, as a united force. Um, I think we are, I think we want to get to the second part of the schedule slide because I think this conversation is going to keep going. We really want to get into some of the details of building out maybe there's some different committees. It sounds like we already have at least one form, but we want to, before we walk away today, let you have that discussion on which areas we really want to focus on. So, <coughs> So what you're looking at is um, a summary of the schedule leading up to the November election. So. If we as the city and you as the CAG think that it makes sense to proceed forward with any sort of revenue measures, this is what our timeline looks like. And so essentially we would have to make a decision before July, by July, because that's when the resolution has to go to council for it to go on the ballot. Um, you know, outside of that, just quickly, um, actually it's August 5th, I apologize. Um, we would move very quickly from there, um, but really our deadline, the most important date up there is that August 5th deadline. That's the last time that we can take a resolution. Um, and so 
think then moving backwards from that, we can have some conversations and set our timeline, but this is where I think to Chris's point is um, we really are hoping that you guys will give you the CAG and embrace it. Simple question. <laughs> This, I, I think there's some uh, critical dates before this. If there's a decision to consider things for the ballot, it's typically wise to do some polling. Yep. So before July 27th, <laughs> right? So so maybe uh, if maybe not off the top of your head, but you know what would be the time frame? That, there, there's a bunch. Of, there's a few dates ahead of this. You know, potential measures, polling. And, can help us understand what those dates are. Because if, if there's an August deadline, there's a des there are deadlines before this. If, if I may jump in quickly, I think I, I, I may have forgotten to mention this. Part of the budget piece, uh, to Doug's point, you know, what is going to be a, a key important piece is going to be those options. So, you know, what is our menu of options as we as we talk about our, uh, uh, you know, uh, our revenue options? Is it a sales tax, utility, user tax, and we'll provide some level of education at the budget workshops, and then that'll help us direct, uh, you know, where we end up if we end up, and, and gauge some of that polling and uh, all those dates as, as we move forward. Urshel, and perhaps you said it, I just haven't heard. Um, when are we going live with balancing act? When are we sharing that with everybody? Um, so there was some discussion we were hoping to uh, make that available sometime in February, but I think uh, internally, as, as as our staff met, uh, we. What we didn't want to do was release a product with one number, one set of numbers, and then the department goes through the process, uh, then the city manager's recommended budget comes out, and then the community's having to uh, review a second set of numbers and then, and then play with those. So I think strategically we were thinking we don't want to confuse the community that is it what we released prior to the recommended, or is it the recommended budget that we do uh, make available? So, 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 bottom, so bottom line, uh, I think, expect the tool to be available uh, when the budget is released. Which is? Uh, well, the date is, uh, I want to say April 10th is what we're uh, aiming for at this point. Uh, and then, sorry. yeah, so April 10th is the tentative date that we're uh, aiming to make the budget available. That's not what it's approved. Yeah, no, it's just the just what's recommended is available, and then we'll do the community engagement piece, and then the council's going to hold the workshops, and uh, it'll have yeah. So, 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 so what, what 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 might affect that though is the outcome of next week. Correct. Week that, you know, so, so that has to be factored in some way if it passes or doesn't pass, because that's eight hundred thousand for the million dollars. That's correct. Or one way or the other. Right. So I think the, the more important question, I think, uh, for us is going to be, like you said, once that decision is out, uh, then as professionals, as, as a city manager, we really have to call in on, okay, what what is the next step? Do we, is that a for sure? And the developer saying, yes, we're running with this. That gives us, the city, some assurance that, yes, this is a go. We can either build in that revenue, or if, uh, if there's any uncertainty, then we'll have that conversation at that time. And I just, I just want to say, um, Harjo, gloss over real quick. Well, we're accelerating the whole city budget process um, compared to previous years, just to try and make this available. Like so, uh, and a lot of people are working really, really hard over these these weeks to move this up by just another month, so we can have real data for people to use. So it's a, a, a actually pre. One of the biggest budget efforts I've seen since I've been here at the city. What would your hope be for the number of people in the public to show up to those meetings? I'm just curious. What would, what would be a happy <coughs> number of people to participate? 500. More than Brian and Doug. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, I mean, when, no. we, when we have those meetings, the budget meetings, it's usually the groups that are coming to ask for for dollars that come to the meetings. If we have an engaged dozen, couple dozen of residents at these at these meetings, that would be an improvement from before. But I mean the 
we're trying a multiple problem approach this time, right? So you'll have the meetings where people can come attend, but you're also going to have the balancing act where people can do it online. You're also going to have different ways for people to communicate. So I don't know if there's a number of people at those meetings, but I'm hoping the population. Yeah, five percent. I don't, I don't know. You, you talk to, just I mean, 400. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think our our target for informing everyone in the Morgan Hill community, I think it is not a good use of our resources. I think that the people I've talked to, they feel good about Morgan Hill. They feel good about the idea of having other informed people make a choice for them and recommend a choice. And I think before we decide whether or not we're going to put a resolution on the ballot, we should consider determining who the influencers are. There are people who represent organizations in Morgan Hill who are very likely to vote, because not very many people in Morgan Hill are going to vote. And so I think that before we decide anything, we should spend some time identifying who the influencers are and talking to them and determining what arguments move them and what questions the city has to ask. And to support this approach, there was a recent study about why people vote. And one of the things that came out of that was that you can get people to vote if you contact them and talk to them individually. So I think that the city, if we knew which 500 or you know, 600 people vote regularly and are in contact with other people who vote regularly and we communicate with them, that would Take us That's what this group is. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, yeah, and, and in fact, to that point, people say, well, you know, what do you want? We know you're reading all this stuff. What do you think? And I think that, you know, me trying to get my neighbor down the street who really doesn't care, you know, it's a waste of my time. But I think that's the whole purpose of, of the community advisory group is that you are those people in the community that we've identified that are involved, that are educated, that vote, that care that have contacts throughout the community. And so I think that's why it's so important that as you guys form as your own group independent from the city, which was the point Nick and Rick made so well at the goal setting, is that you will be successful, one, as you are independent from us, but two, as you now have so much information to share. Well, I think the strategy of, the strategy of, of determining who the influencers are and talking to them is really important. Like in my neighborhood, there's this couple. They talk to everybody everywhere. They are, and that's you know, and there are people that I need to. So maybe we can add as a subgroup. Sounds like they have an interest as a as a uh, as a subgroup to identify who those influencers are and what that actually looks like. For yeah, and I think the next couple of slides yeah. can really get into that. So we know that up there, but maybe just to finish, can we? Can we finalize kind of any questions on schedule that piece, and then we can keep this discussion going on the the other area? Because I think there might be some good um, questions we kind of put on some slides to help you think about the next steps too. So I have a question about balancing act and the community engagement meeting. So it sounds to me like that tool is not going to be available, and I think we're just saying a big opportunity there um, for people to see that in action. Um, a demo, I think, might work, but so. so you're thinking of uh, the large community meetings? Yes. Okay. So, so we can we can we can go back and stretch and see if we can um, get some refined numbers and make that happen. So, so we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll take that feedback. Okay. I think. I'm sorry. So I, I think what Kathy said at the very end of her comments too is that in the very least, if you could demo it at those meetings, the same way you did for us with like last year's numbers or something. So then to do it, try to do it, I know that there's like a staff way of doing things. You mean to do it in a physical layman's term and not financial term? No, I'm trying to be as diplomatic as possible when I say this, and it's, and it's really, like it's to your guys' credit that you walk around with all of this information in your heads and you know better than anybody how dire the situation is. 
but you are constantly trying to present things from a neutral perspective, which I think is fair, except we are literally looking at seven to ten million dollar budgets shortfall immediately. And so there's no, that's not political, that's not a political statement. And so um, I think if there's one way to present it that's um, kind of glossing over that fact in, in, in terms of trying to stay neutral, and then there's another way to do it in an in, in honest way that um, because the, if, if you don't have the numbers for people to work with, trying to present it in a more straightforward manner that kind of gets across how dire the situation is, I think will be more helpful because we want people to be shocked and we want them to go back to their neighborhoods and say, I don't know who all of the influencers are in everybody else's neighborhood, but you know who the couple is in your neighborhood. So I want people to be shocked and go back and talk to these people and say, do you know that the city is looking at this and this is what's, you know, um, but, but maybe there will be people that, that will care. So anyway, that was. I think it's really good point. A really good point, and I think that's where these type of things come because we, we often can just say, here's the numbers on the board, and this is our unfunded liability, and if we, you know, this seven percent is for infrastructure, and no one cares that if we don't put more money towards that, there's going to be huge holes in our streets, and our, we're going to look like I won't name other cities, but we're going to look like this thing. So um, it's a, a really good point, and I think this group can help do that too. And I think maybe to the point with the even the balancing act software, I think there was some discussion on can the CAD group see some of the stuff first, right, uh, before the community. So giving feedback that way too would be probably helpful. Maybe just can we? Are there any other questions on the schedule? If not, yeah, um, just quickly um, on the schedule. If there's a community referendum, when do you need signatures? So you need signatures for something to get on the ballot. No, when are those signatures? The city can put it on. Yeah, I know. Like, I would say, what if the community does yeah. something? Yeah. Like reference another development? Like A. Measure A. Well, they get can't recommend that your biggest misery is already over. Yeah, that's an example. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. so say I wanted to say travel road crawl a lot of town. I I'm pretty sure that our deadline is it's irrelevant to the deadline because these these are set by the nope. county of Santa Clara. I think it's July. They're their deadlines. So I'm I'm almost positive, but I will confirm and I'll email all of you that it's the same deadline. Yeah. So you would have to get us information in order for us to get it on that August 5th council meeting. Okay. So, but I will confirm that. August yeah. said is probably what they leave in recent But remember that referendum does not have to be timed with the election just like the past one does. So if the council takes an act on the zoning that someone's going to referend, they can do the referendum after the zoning. So if the zoning understand. So it could be within this election, it, it, I think it would be driven by the time the council takes the action that's going to be referended. Right? Yeah. Okay, right? No one's scheduled. <laughs> All right, so just um, we, we, what we wanted to do, and you guys have talked about communities, what we wanted to do really is we're getting, maybe for this next group, and, and you guys can change this, you're, you're maybe, is really see where are the key focus areas that you want to talk about as a group, and maybe put those out there as committees, or put them out there as items we want to talk about at the big picture meetings, but look at those. And kind of kind of spread those out and at least we get a brainstorm of those, get an idea of who wants to participate. And then after those are up, really, and you guys have brought this up as well, what support do you need from us to support you in the in, in that work? Because in different areas you've mentioned there needs they said there needs to be a lot of support all the way up to the city council and some of the things. There might be other things where you need staff to wrench some more. So we really we really want to talk about that. And then exactly to Yvonne's point. What support from the outside do we need, um, or do you need, in, in these areas um, to really keep things moving forward? And, and how do we move forward? So if it's OK with the group, maybe we start with just where are, what are the priority areas of big, big things you believe are kind of priorities for the okay. Now you're getting to where I was at. Okay. What are the top point 
I'm sorry. When we came here in 1996, Lockheed brought us out here from the building, okay? I came to City Hall because I looked at a lot of communities to see where I wanted to live. I came to City Hall and I asked, you know, how things were going. Well, in the 1996 time frame, the city was in a very big mess, okay? Umpteen people had been laid off. Okay, for me, working with nonprofits for the last 20 years, the first thing I ask him is, what one, two, three, four, five things do you most need where I need to direct my attention to raise funds for you? That's what I need from the city. Give me three things that you need most, and so I can wrap my head around that and see what, if anything, I can do about it. I agree with that. Public safety and infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. And, and Carl always used to give us a I'm sorry. Carl always used to give us a very, very good report at commission, okay, on, on what we needed, capital expenditures, and when we needed it, what the costs were going to be, all of that. This population can't absorb all that information. They don't have time, okay? So we need to get one, two, three, four, five. I don't know what it is. Think of it in terms of reading a resume. You give it three to five seconds. And if it captures your attention, you go on. If it doesn't, you don't. And, and that's what I see. That's what I saw with the measure A data. OK, great. But I want it on the front page, big bold, right there. And that would be what I want to read. Okay. okay, so I think, does that go back to um, the bottom line communication subcommittee? It's determining what is the bottom line and then it goes to the committee. So, but, to so work on. What, we, what we have given you as a city staff is the information. Right. We've told you what the needs are. Right. So with that big chunk of that, you're looking at police, fire, and fixing our city roads and infrastructure. Those are the three things we've said that are the things we are not able to fund at the levels we want to fund. Well, and not cutting, no. right. Saying, right? Right, that, I mean, that's... Right. So, so maintaining and then enhancing. So, so we, feel, we feel we've kind of told the story to the group of what it is, how this group chooses to tell that story and what you need to help tell that story um, we want to help support you. So I'm looking at number two. What city support is needed to support work of our group? I, I think a, a nice thing would be a, like a summary page. Like the top main things we've learned. And so we would have uh, talking points or bullets of what, you know, uh, we should be sharing with the public. We can do that. I think uh, it's on our, uh, on the CAD web page, we do have each of the educational sessions that we did. We try to consolidate all that information into a one page flyer. So I think that's available, but it sounds like a more refined document. I, just one school would be that the last session when we were in that room, when we did the breakout at the top, and then we sort of tried to synthesize all of it together and make sort of a big picture. If we could do that with each of the the categories, I think that would be a good place to start. Okay, and I was looking, that's what I was looking at on the phone here. So what we came up with, one, two, three, four, three, six areas, right? Yeah. We have six areas. So we have infrastructure, economic development, pensions, budget, housing, and public safety. So if we could distill down some of the top imperatives in each one of those areas, we're going to understand how better to message that. But to, and then once we kind of pull those and distill down those two or three or three to five major areas, then we may, we'll have to come back and say this is the support we need or this is the information that we need to be able to articulate a message. But I think you're right. I think if we hold true to what we did on the visioning session two months ago, which turned it out to be what we considered some of the top priorities of what we should be involved in, mm -hmm. trying to understand what that means from the city perspective would be helpful. So I think that's probably a direction where we need to go. Then on the, underlining that, obviously, is the communication subgroup that then always takes all that informed information and directly puts it all together in a package that's cohesive will make it more relevant to the city. So we're not looking at specific one time or two times or different issues. We're trying to collect, the, uh, we're trying to put some uniformity in how we're making our informed decisions here. So that may be a good starting point. Okay, so we will we'll summarize that on a sheet and get back to the group. Um, are we thinking that we should bring that back to 
subcommittee that comes or we should bring it back to the whole group at the next monthly meeting or both obviously um, we want to we want to keep this moving. I right? think we would like you to email it to us as quickly as possible, yeah. so that yeah. we, yeah. 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 So we can then get yeah. together and do yeah. the subcommittee yeah. work. So yeah. let, me, let me ask something you wish for it to be. I want to go back to Caitlin's because I want to kind of Caitlin's comments, all great comments. As far as how sometimes the city uh, was the term you used neutralizes what was the word? Yeah, that's that's that. I mean that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Neutralizes the effect. <laughs> so I still struggle with the responsibility and the obligation for the city council to be as transparent based on how they all feel about certain areas. So what am I missing here? I mean, I would like to hear from the city council that the, their, their appreciation for the consequences for either having something or not having something. Why is that difficult? Or is there some restriction that I'm unaware of that the city council can't express? I mean, if you take a look at a budget process, right, you know, you can go up to the wall and you can kind of pull things up and off, right? Yeah. And this is the consequence to that. Well, why can't we get the opinions <clears throat> from the city council on what it really means and represents? Yeah, maybe. So I think I can speak a little bit better than the staff can to this. So the, what I was referring to was not the city council's obligations. It's the staff. Because the staff is tasked with the impossible job of whatever the whims of the city council are the day before taking that charge and as truth whether or not they agree or whether or not their data goes along with what that charge is so it's a funny relationship because the council is getting their information from the staff and they're either going along with staff recommendation or they're not and if they're not then the staff still has to take on the charge of whatever the city council is agreeing with. And to your point earlier, they don't all agree. <clears throat> I mean, sometimes about like the most mundane things. And so the, the, the thing that's tricky is that because the council run political campaigns for themselves, mm -hmm. right, and the staff can't get involved <clears throat> in the political campaigns, there is a little bit of a disconnect of what the staff can do and what the council can do. We can do anything, obviously. Um, we can inf try to influence the staff. We can try to influence the council directly. Mm -hmm. But the council, as individuals, has, have more ability to voice their opinions um, and to be clear about the direction they want to go. And then they don't always reach consensus, so that's why we have a vote. And people agree and people don't. And so the, the determining the vote is what determines what the staff has to do. And so when, I, when I'm referring to the, the sort of the neutrality, mm -hmm. it's not the neutrality of the council members. That's up to their individual and what, in my opinion, whether or not they're already campaigning for their next race, about whether or not they're transparent about their opinions. It's more the difficult position that the staff is in right. in trying to manage that expectation. Well, I appreciate this. Maybe I need to change my thinking. So maybe I need to change my thinking. If we were looking for some of those top two or three things, each of those categories, could we go to the city staff and, and, requ and, and request that you provide the, the pros and cons and the yes. consequences yes. to decisions? Yes. Because that's what we need, right? Yes. At that point, then we can take information and we can inform the community of where that's going. But so the neutrality, you're right, thank you. I need to change my thinking. I'm not thinking clearly then. So what I would look for is an understanding based on all those priorities. If we, if we pivot left or we pivot right, here are the consequences, the pluses and the minus as it relates to those decisions, then we can make some informed choices on best how to represent what we feel is right. Uh, so it's really not the city council per se, but I, that's, that neutrality is where I've been struggling with. Why can't we not just receive information? Because, you know, ultimately, facts are, are what's most important in life, right? So we have to deal with that. So what I want to say quickly is, is I believe that whatever message we come up with, it's got to be ridiculously simple. You know, it, you can't you can't get into a lot of words. You've got to break it down to what is the real fundamental thing. And for me, it's that the balance, the budget has to be balanced. And so whatever choices you make, you have to determine whether or not. Uh, that's going to uh, give you what you want and what's it going to cost? Who's going to pay for it? 
And so all of these items that come up, like the hotels, you know, what are you giving up? And what is it going to give you? That's how we got to go forward. And I like to see in all of those six areas that you were talking about, um, having each decision saying, okay, what's the pro and con for each of these things? You know, is it improving your quality of life? Or is it, you know, bringing in revenue? Try to make it really simple is going to be our best way of getting it out there. I mean, that's the, the message part of it. And then we have to figure out how we do that, whether it's social media or just talking with friends or putting it in the newspaper or what. I don't know. <coughs> Sorry, a little bit of a frog on my throat. Um, so kind of come back to this like, key priorities. What, what started this whole process is where are we going to get the money in the city to pay for what we need? And there are, going off memory, there are roughly three buckets. There's roughly a $3 million a year bucket of just to carry on doing what we've been doing um, and, and addressing deficits. There is roughly a one to two million dollar bucket of RDCF just got blown up by the state. Now what do we do about that? And then there was another, you know, five-ish million dollar bucket of unfunded needs, staffing a fire station, so forth and so on. None of that actually addressing capital like um, uh, infrastructure. I don't believe you kind of capital needs. I don't think we're captured in there. Am I correct? Uh, uh, or was it? So, so some some of that five million was, you know, getting back on track with our capital needs. So we have a ten million dollar problem, and solving that problem is our priority. It, we kind of get off into you know some of these other areas. So for what city support to support the work? I would like to know what are the options for those three major things. Yeah. What are the options? You know, and, and you either you either bring in more cash somehow or you cut people in services. So and ever so so what are the options as far as and, and, and there's not one there is no magic bullet. I think this work we've done is clear. There's not a do this thing, boom, ten million soft. So what are the options to meet those three major chunks of a ten million dollar problem? Maybe hopefully as this CAG we can come to a consensus on here's the package of options we advocate for and then how we go after that. There's nothing that's going to go on the November ballot that's going to make a $10 million fix, I'll predict. <laughs> Without having seen the work, I'll put $100 in my own money. It's like there is not a $10 million fix you can put on the November ballot and pass. So that's a, that's a piece. There, there's not a... Um, we're going to staff the fire station by moving funds from other things. Basically, that would mean, okay, we need another fire station. We're going to do it with other savings. Shut down parks and rec. That's not really an option, right? So, so there's some really radical things we could get forced to do. But since I, I, that's what I think we need. What are the options to hit that 10 million? Maybe of, of the nice to have or need to have, there's three million. We have no idea how to do. So we don't even have a plan. For that last three, here's the plan for the seven. But that we that's what I think we need. We need a list of options to hit that ten million dollar bogey, and then we can see what can we get behind and what can we support. So just a quick quick comment. So <laughs> on some of that when we went through the individual pieces, because the ten million dollars just isn't isn't uh, you know a deficit at this point. You know, uh, so. Some of the stuff we hope we defined when police and fire came here and said, hey, if we don't open this third fire station for $2.3 million, what will happen is our response times will go to this level and people are going to be waiting over 10 minutes for a fire truck to get to respond to an emergency. We can get all that outlined for you because I think that's important and that's what you're saying. But hopefully there's some of that information on the infrastructure, if we don't put the money into the roads, our PCI is going to continue to drop and the roads are going to get worse. But I'm where, what are the options to get the money? So we'll, we, we've tried to discuss those and we'll continue to outline those as well. So we can say, I think this group has said, I've heard it, it's a combination of the right type of economic development and uh, potential additional revenues. But how do we put those pieces together? I understand what you're saying. So I think, each of those yeah, and I think think we're trying to move towards that because we could say, hey, we could we could do a community facilities district and that would get us where we need. We already pulled 
the community, and that's not where they want to go. So, so maybe we redouble our If that's really the solution, we say, the heck with everything else. We're all in on telling people why you should have said yes when they called you about a CFD. I, I don't know. We, 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 yeah. we, need, we need to get to that. We need to get to action. Yeah. Okay. And or Charles has been waiting. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, uh, what I was going to suggest is when you do do that, give us all of the options, even the ones that you know won't work, and just say why they won't work. Okay. That's all the solve. Just give them all. And, and so, and, and I think what John made, at least, I don't want to speak for you, but, but for when we're talking about potential revenues, like, most people don't work in government that you're talking to. What are every single possible one that every community has ever done yeah. in every area that we could possibly look at? And if there's reasons why you know that they don't work, just know why they don't work. And I, I think uh, Harjo's already been working on this, so we did plan so, for the April meeting. Yeah, I think very early on in the group when we turned Charles, out, wait, I don't want to say. <laughs> yeah, no, wait, wait, sorry. Uh, just to quickly add to that, and I think we'll share that um, back with the group when we do send out the summary. I think we're going to share very early on when we did the budget presentation a, a matrix of revenue options. Um, so it should be in your inbox. If not, we'll definitely um, add that in. It really talks about the key uh, priorities, and we try to include a column that has Morning Hill relevance. So, meaning historically, how is Morning Hill done? That. So we'll update that yeah. and we'll show that as soon as possible. And, and just, just one point, and I think this group is directed at this, this issue isn't a November issue. No. This, no. Yeah. this is a, this is this is a longer term. Charles. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's so shocked. <laughs> Sorry for coming in late. I was running my dog at the race today. He came in last. Um, <laughs> she's, 14 years old, so um, I want to change the subject to a slight bit in that um, Measure uh, I is coming up on our ballot, and it's a $900 million bond this school has. And if that passes, and we're here complaining about potholes and lack of fire, lack of police, I think it's really strange for the city of Morgan Hill to have a school district that is really flush and has beautiful, wonderful buildings. But to get there, you have to dodge uh, uh, dodge the holes in the ground and uh, perhaps not feeling as safe as you would want to be in your own community. So for me, um, I would like to see us um, as a community decide really what we want before the, uh, uh, this coming election. The, the, the school puts out um, that it's good for the community, the, 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 parent, the, 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 the students will be happier, and I think that's really important. And at the same time, I think it's really important that um, we be given as a community options as to well, maybe we don't really need that much money in the school district right now. Maybe we need to have them pare it down a little bit, and some of that money then, in terms of property tax, comes to the city, so that it's equally distributed uh, between um, the total entity of the school district and the city, because. Um, if the bond passes, I just think of it as being a really burden on our property taxes and least and less likely that we are going to, as a city, as a voters in November, approve a tax measure uh, for the city. So I really think we should um, uh, ask the, the, the school board maybe a school um, a, a superint a superintendent and have a forum about it. And really comes some issues about $1,000, is it $1,000 a, a month or $1,000 a year that we will be paying extra if that school bond passes. $47 for every $100,000 of value. Right, so right. every house is worth, it's every thousand is worth a million bucks, let's say. Okay. So that's value, not assessment. Right, so we have lots of homes in Morgan Hill that haven't been assessed in a very long time. Right. 
Right. So I just think that if um, I want to know what my options are, I want to improve the schools, but I don't want to lose any police officers. I want to make my child happy, but I also want no holes in the asphalt. I, I, I want sort of, I want a reasonable approach so I can make a, a reasonable decision. Are you suggesting a forum before the March 3rd election? Mm -hmm. Uh, so probably one question I have for you on that is, is, I guess where I'm not connecting is that I 100% agree with you and that people need the information to make the decision so they aren't in competition. Um, so are you referring specifically like, you, you don't have to say yes to one and no to the other, like this is what they both do, measure A versus well, measure I? Mean, I? The school district, if let's say the, the bond doesn't pass. Mm -hmm. um, or if, if enough people get decided that maybe it's if we have this forum and and the, and the, and the enough people see it and say you know maybe it would be better if the school district puts on a bond issue in the November issue uh, uh, that's four hundred thousand okay that gives them enough for the next ten years but it also then gives us the ability to say well we would like some of that as well to fix our or add. Uh, to a fire station or uh, not lose a police officer or fix some of the roads. I like a balance, but if the way it's going now is so overwhelmingly um, taken by the school district that we're left with particles. Right. I mean, maybe that's not the way to say it, but it's hard for me to say, well, I don't want to give it all to the school district. I like the school district, yeah. but I would rather just—I rather make the kids unhappy and still have another police officer, personally. Right. A challenge that I see, and team, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you know, I think if we were having Measure I, the school district bond, at the same time that we were looking at a sales tax measure, it might be more helpful for us. I think Measure A is wonderful and it's a small piece of the puzzle that gets us to a more sustainable, fiscal sustainable future. Um, I just don't know if they're in direct competition in that way. Just yeah. yeah. You know, you know, just, just, just before we jump into Measure A, we're kind of in the middle of trying to trying to get these at least committees or groups done. So let's put Measure A in the parking lot and we'll come back to it at the end of the meeting. We got about um, 25 minutes left. And I'd like to just kind of wrap up this piece so we can kind of see what the next steps are. And then we can jump back to Measure I and potentially the demo. So maybe to help us move along, I think, I think I've heard of at least three things that, that we've talked about. So we have the, the, the bottom line uh, communication subcommittee as one piece. We had an earlier conversation on economic development, right type of development, zoning, and that piece. And that committee that wants to dig deeper on that, right? So that is at least of two committees that we've talked about putting together. Communication sounds like that was another. Uh, it's that's what that. That's what that bottom line. Okay. One thing. Like, and then I just can't remember the name. So <laughs> we <laughs> can't remember the name. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't remember. Okay. So, and then we've had this discussion before that there were some people who interested in doing more of a deep dive into the budget, the human budget builder, and that sort of piece to say, hey, our group has done our work on the deep dive. Is that still an interest? Is, is there an interest among any members on that piece? I, I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. Discussing the budget issues, I find that I struggle with people about how the budget impacts them in their specific neighborhoods. And so I would like to have some sort of a committee that is dedicated with dealing with uh, information that needs to be presented to people well, when we're in the process of trying to, you know, persuade them. So I don't know. Is what that not our communication it. committee? Well, this is, it's. I mean, you may, it's really for you all to decide. So I asked the question oh. of Holger, but I'm thinking of persuasive information. You know, to what Charles said mm -hmm. is that people have a limited amount of money that they spend. And they're more likely to look at a revenue source if they have something concrete that they could look to that's impacted, that impacts them. So for, it's, it's hard in my neighborhood to say you should support a tax 
when the streets seem to be so good. So my lack is I don't know which streets in my neighborhood are you know, poorly maintained. And I think that goes back to us providing you guys some more information, which is one of the tools. Oh, yeah. 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 I so, didn't see that. Sorry. But no, I think, I think it does go to the communications committee. So I think once we can outline all these things on how we're going to communicate it, because your, your neighborhood might be have good streets for the next 15 years because it was just built. But after those 15 years, we're not going to have any money left to fix those streets because all the streets go down now. Well, I, I, I don't have, I'd like to know what the successful arguments have been. You know, if you've managed to change somebody's mind about something, what was the fact that, you know, really grabbed a person? You know, for me, the volunteer thing was because when I told someone the city used volunteers, they thought differently about the sales tax issue. And I'd like to know if other people have had those eye high, you know, eye high moments. Yeah, so I think, I think, I mean, it's a, it could be something as basic as a story building the story committee, like you're looking at those individual stories. I I don't know what you call it either. Um, maybe Doug does. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to follow up on Yvonne's comment, because one of the things that interests me is, is understanding if the message is getting through. And I've gone to a number of community meetings and other agencies over the last couple of years where they'll do some polling. Maybe they have clickers or maybe smartphones. And you saw the council the first day, I think it was the first day, use smartphones to you know, register answers to some things that were being put out. And so I would like this in our communications, at least when we're talking to groups, I don't know if it works as well with people, is to try and do a little quick assessment of do you know much about the issue? Um, you know, are you for or against or you're here because you don't know yet? And then towards the end, you know, did we get reach reach you? Are you do you feel better informed? Did you change your mind? You know, because I don't know what works with people. I floated an idea a couple of months ago and it didn't work for everyone and that was good information for me because it works for me that's the way i think and so i would do a whole you know outreach program based on what works for me and i'm missing the target so i think assessing you know the effectiveness because we will have different targets and you know we're going to run into people that don't believe that the city spends money wisely so What's the impact of giving them a flyer that says we need seven million dollars for this and three million dollars for that if they don't believe that we use the money wisely in the first place? Yeah. So that's just something that, and you know, that that's something I, I hope we pay some attention to. So I just want to ask a question: Is that going to be a separate committee than the big bottom line? Because it sounds like it's. <laughs> Uh, well, we put a lot of things in this thing called communications. And so I, we can we can leave it separate. We can we can separate it out and say what are the what are the stories that the stuff would say when like hearts and minds. Maybe like a research committee, right? No, sure. research because whatever if we find something that's super effective. We want to implement it right away. So, so then you give it to the committee. communication committee right. to implement it. Exactly. So it should be a, an assessment committee for sure, and then, yeah, and then it goes out. And then it goes to the communication okay. So some kind of assessment. We can, we can work on the names of all of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, 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 that's what you're, you want. You want the data behind the communication. Is what I want, yeah, the results, the successful results. And it should be separate, because it should be something yeah. we can yeah, we got so yeah, are we at a point where we're still going to be having our monthly meetings, but we also are now at the point where we're trying to form subcommittees? Yes. I want to understand. Yeah. And you want everyone here to take a subcommittee or just a few people? But yes. yes. I think we're going to get to that. We, so my, my hope is everyone here picks a subcommittee, and then we even ask. Um, we'll send some emails out, but hoping that some of the CAG members can reach out to some of the other CAG members who have become less involved or more, or more involved in the beginning to say, hey, come come join us, because I think we had some a, a few more people to start. Kind of reinvigorate re that. And then, on top of that, maybe there's other people in the community that we talked about in other groups 
that maybe you want to pull a few of those people in to your subcommittee that aren't even on the CAG to help with your discussions. So, and the last thing I'll say is when we do these regular meetings, we want to talk about the format because the format could shift and it could be, you know, a one hour general group discussion and then use the second half of it for your subcommittees to have discussions if people choose their individual subcommittees. We need to figure that out. I think that's uh, the next discussion too. So we need to figure out the format that's going to work best for, for you all. Um, before we start talking on that, we have now three committees up there that we've talked about. I asked a question, and we'll just do it by raising, hand, raising hands. Who thinks we need a budget deep dive committee still at this point? So that's no one. So that committee just died for lack of uh, Wait, lack it's of <laughs> yeah. so It was successful. Yeah. Okay. So are there other, before we start, before we get into details again, are there other committees besides these three that we really, really need um, to put together? I'm not sure it's a committee, uh, Chris, but um, I'd, I'd like to be able to um, figure out what our, our, our vision is. Right. That's the, uh, you, were, you weren't here for the <laughs> discussion, but that's what the communication, it's, I called it the bottom line communication committee because to me that's exact, that was my comment, that we're missing sort of the long term, what's our vision, where are we trying to get to, yeah. and, and, and then how do we communicate that to the yeah, yeah, I think the vision is like, I, I threw this out on that email last week and saw, and I've been thinking about it now more, and I'm thinking, okay, well, my vision is I want to become completely dependent on tourism as a vision, so that we don't uh, feel like we have to develop um, and destroy our our physical environment. So that would be something that that I would like to be, you know, so that. I just um, wanted to follow up on Doug's comment. Using technology, I, I think we could use that more, especially in these community meetings and forums, to get feedback from the broader spectrum. Not everybody will take the microphone and tell you what they think or feel. So that was great at the workshop where we all could pull out our phone and hit whatever button worked for us. So I think if you could do that, uh, it brings, I think, the younger generation, <laughs> aside from me, is used to using that technology. So I think if we can do that to broaden our feedback from the community, it would be great. And I think that's actually a great idea. You know, one of the things that I did is, and I've got a forum, I'm president of the homeowners association, and I had a meeting to really talk about measure A. Um, and Nick was there. I don't know how many people were there in total. Maybe 80? 80, easy, right? Yeah, but somewhere around 80 people. And we actually, when I look back at it, did a horrible job of communicating it. You know, I said, I asked somebody, can you put it on Nextdoor and Facebook? And it ended up being community service message was the lead. Mm -hmm. And it brought no emotional, you know, people didn't relate to it at all. And I got 80 people. If we do something like public safety, for example, my neighborhood, my next door neighbor was robbed. They broke in the side door, ransacked the house. Uh, there was a shooting on the corner of Mission View and Cochran just the other night. Uh, probably four or five businesses have had smash and grab kind of things where the windows were smashed out. You know, those are emotional things. And I think if we do it in the right way on social media and get people to a meeting, and again, I can have another homeowners meeting, but say, hey, all the public's invited, please come. And then if we could do this kind of, maybe get the city to help, some polling in that kind of a meeting, I think we could get some interesting information. And I think we can get a decent number of people, thought leaders, there. So I, I do think we have the forums to do that. Um, really building on what Rick is saying, I just, I want to remind everybody that for us, Engage is not a one or two year effort. I mean, it started out that way, but if we, if this group decides, especially with the budget timeline for November, hey, we know we need a revenue measure, but November 2020 is too soon, that may be what you decide. 
And it may be that since we've moved a little slower in informing and educating you and getting you up to speed, that you need time to have those conversations, to form your groups, to reach out. That may be what you decide. So just as we're talking about it, I, just, I was feeling at least like, oh my gosh, the November election is right around the corner. And to have resolutions and have decisions made by the end of July, when we're at the end of February right now, seems intense. So I, I, I just wanted to put that out there for everybody that, um, you know, we're really looking to this group to help drive that. Just if I could just take that comment and connect it to what I was talking about with the neutrality is that they they need us to do that. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a place for us to start, it, the staff can't advocate, I guess right. is the easiest way to say it, is that they can give us the information, they can kind of nudge us in the right direction, but they can't advocate, we can advocate. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a really great place to start. Going back to the subcommittees really quickly and thinking more about what you're saying, Charles, and maybe what you're saying is that Outside, because so we've been focusing so much on sort of what's our bottom line for kind of the budget and the vision of what we're trying to do. But it sounds, I, I think that maybe what you're saying more is you want more of an even higher level. Of what's my vision for Morgan Hill? Sort of what, and and I, I totally have been all along talking about the the tourism. We should have five years ago when we tried to start. We should have really dove in on the tourism so that we were getting the benefits now, but that's something I totally agree with. So if maybe that is something that, if we're talking about longer longer term, these kind of are our priorities for right now for subcommittees, but if we're talking longer term for the CAD, maybe that is a, a good yeah. extra sort of, what is my ultimate vision for Morgan Health Subcommittee? Mm -hmm. So my question is, if we weren't here, our group wasn't in existence, what would happen? I mean, the city has this problem, and you didn't have these people that are willing to, you know, stand up and talk to the public. Could you just, I mean, what would happen? We would do what we did two years ago. We did some polling. We, we attempted to do outreach. We found that we kind of fell flat, and we found that it wasn't successful. And so that's kind of what, what bore this group was a, a fresh idea to say, we, we need help. We need help learning how to communicate with all of you. We speak city, and you speak English. And so, um, you know, really, this is our, our next attempt to connect, to engage, to inform, to learn from the community. So, if you weren't here, we would be doing community outreach meetings. We would be doing polling. I would, I would just say we would be where we were a year ago, you know, starting this process, right? So it's good to know that we're a year into this, so we have made some headway. Um, no, but to do other cities do this. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so the, the, the yes. process we put together with the CAG group, but actually, I mean, we are using a model that we've seen in other cities actually, yeah. probably sort of like two or yeah. two or no, three years ago. No, we did a really big outreach, very similar to this, which is a big part of what inspired this. Michelle and I and Maureen, yeah. and we, we actually gone to a couple different things to say, this is what other cities have done, we've tried to do this. But we also realized, we, we realized Morgan Hill is different than everywhere else. And we realized we, when we, we've done polling two years ago, when we did polling for the UUT many years ago, we have a community um, that has high expectations of us um, at, for city government. They very much do. And, but they are also a community that doesn't, they want to make sure their money is used very, very wisely and expect it to go a very long way, which is something we we take pride in as an organization, that we're able to do that. Um, we think we do it better than most of the other agencies around us. But we know that we can't do what you all can do as the, as community members, um, because we're, we're the city staff. I mean, my neighbors believe me when they tell them something, but someone at the grocery store might not because I'm the person working at the city. So all the other communities that have been successful in explaining where the city's at, they've educated key members of their community who are then able to educate a broader section of the community. And to be frank, to build trust in your city government that they're, they're doing the right thing. Um, not just the city council, but the staff. Um, and so that communication is is the, the key that other cities have found. But if you didn't have us to, to ask, 
I guess my question is, could you just put in a sales tax on us and just say, you guys have to pay it? No, no. it has to get approved by the voters. It has to get approved by the voters. Yeah. Yep. So if oh. we don't approve it, what would happen? So, it's, so that's, a, that's a question we're going to outline for you. Um, I mean, the quick answer is, we don't get more police officers, and so the city isn't safer. We don't get more fire stations, and, and we don't your fire insurance will go up. Your fire insurance will go up, and basically what, what Chief Crawford said is people will die because we're going to be there three, four, or five minutes later. More things will burn, fires will be worse, and that's not like a thing you can compare. It just happens when it, when it happens. And then our roads are going to, we have the data that shows that our roads are going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Until you know we're back in a uh, lot well, less in our but, but 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 those are the, the big things that will happen. And then to I think it was John's point, we hit the next recession, yes. and we do what we did ten years ago, okay. which we still haven't recovered from, and cut the existing services we have. But our community expects to have good roads. Our community expects to have parks. Our community expects to be safe. There's those expectations. So, if if sales tax doesn't happen, the three of us and the rest of the city staff, our job is to tell the council everything we can possibly do to try and meet those levels of service uh, within the means that we have. Yeah. And maybe just a couple of thoughts. Uh, one, after this hearing, can you share with us a couple of the cities that you guys just uh, use this discovery as well, because we could reach out. To our counterparts and kind of learn some of the strengths or the deltas that they had as they form some of those areas because those are better practices and we should be able to reach out to them uh, just to learn from that so yeah. that would be great yeah. uh, and the other quick thought is is that uh, and i think we're going to have to wrestle with this as a group is, is to ensure that we don't provide some level of uncertainty as we've been expressing over the past few months as far as just looking at these on an isolated committee process we're going to have to come up with a comprehensive vision of who we are and then how these subcommittees really feed into that vision. So a part of our sessions together, we'll have to determine what that looks like. Uh, and what we think we, at least I know I walk away, Rick, correct me wrong, but some of the individuals that are in the audience behind us, we do have to uh, determine how we provide that line of separation so we are seen as a trusted source because we are a commission group from the city. So if we're looking at the ways to manage communications and doing some research and some stories, we're going to have to determine how best we're going to look and feel so we can provide that precedent. So I think you're right, it's, we're almost at a point, almost at a point where we're going to have to start to narrate the sessions and the agenda so we can take a look at partitioning time to be able to come to terms with all of this. But I still want to encourage our group to make sure that we're not looking at things in silos as well, that we're going to have to come up with our own identity and how we present ourselves to the community because as we start to reach out, unless we do that, uh, we will still have some of the perception issues that right now the city as a whole is addressing, and we're going to have to come to terms with that. So. You know, one of, one of the things that I'm a little happy about is John left already, but Joe was part of the group that formed this dynamic group that's against a lot of things that's going on in the cities right now, but we start, he's attending meetings. I'd like to have him join our group because we, he's, got, he's got a group of people that are polarized against some things that are going on in the city right now, but once they understand, and I think he's beginning to understand because he comes to meetings and he hears all these things, he delves he delves into the data, he deep dives into it, and he's very bright, and a bunch of other people on the committee are bright people. If we can get them engaged so that they understand the, not only the short term, but the long term ramifications of what's happening, then maybe we can get them to become more involved on a positive note instead of totally on a negative note. And I think that's important because we want that, that involvement so that we can change the minds of the people that don't understand it to where they get the data and they can understand it better at least. Um, I just I just want to do a quick time check. So we have five minutes until we're we're done. We did want to allocate if there was time for anyone that wanted to talk on Measure I a little bit more with Charles as well. If there's anyone who wants to see uh, the new website, or we can just send that out by a link and people can look at that. Is um, and then 
Do people want to keep going? I mean, we could stay here until noon. Are, are people really wanting to sneak out here at 11.30? We're not in any rush. It's up to you guys. We want to be respectful. I'm done at 11.30. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like there's a significant number of people that need to leave in five minutes. So, can we, and we'll, we'll pass out for more comments, but what, what we'd like to do before we leave is if you have an interest in one of those three committees, as you walk out, take one of our colored markers and write your name next to the committee so we can just put people's, people's names on there um, and help kind of coordinate that. Then, the next thing we really want to discuss is agenda for the next meeting. So to the next point, it should be your meeting. So um, we got, it was brought up by the meeting, but our joke was already planning to use some of the time for the next meet, at the next meeting to talk about the uh, revenue opportunities. We will bring back the, um, hopefully sooner get it to you, but we'll, we'll bring back the, um, the big picture info sheet on summary of everything we do, the, the what it is that, that Sue talked about, right? So we'll, we'll bring those things back. So what else do you think is a key thing for you as a group for the next next meeting that you want us to have on the agenda? Next meeting is March 21st. I think we... So I think the wrong dates on the agenda would be the fourth, if, if that's the fourth Saturday of March. I think we have the third Saturdays on the agenda. Yeah, we think it's March 28th. Sorry, we... March what? 28th. Um, yeah, we we can if the majority of the group like it's it's really it's your meeting so if a different day works better for the group. One of the things we need to do, Chris, before we start this communication, before we start this communication uh, network, is we need to have a common voice. Uh, we need to have that each of us has the the information and we're all speaking as one voice. Because if, if everybody else's experiences of going to the grocery store is what mine has been over the last <laughs> week, you get bombarded the minute you even approach a doorway. And we need to have, we need to have a common voice to argue against that. I can do it because I happen to believe in Measure A, but not everybody does. Can, can we finish the date? Are we meeting on the 21st or 28th? 28th. 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 Okay. Can, we, can you guys raise your hands for the 28th just so we can see? You get one. So a majority of you. Okay. This okay. is okay. He's an idiot. Like okay. <laughs> uh, so to the topic of the next agenda, I don't know if it's possible. I would love to see a list of options. Yeah. For our ten million dollar meet, both all the imagined revenue sources, even ones that haven't been polled or whatever, you know, there's there's fire districts, there's CFD, there's all kinds of things, and any you know efficiency the options you might even put in there, you're like increase <coughs> volunteers and look at that and say, yeah, maybe there's forty thousand dollars a year, but but still since it's been brought up or maybe it's whatever, even some of the ones that have been evaluated that don't make a big financial difference. Let's capture that so that when it comes up again, to, we love volunteers. It's awesome. Here's what we're generating now with it, and we think we can get another X, but that X is, is not what, not what we need. So, so kind of a, an integrated space, option space, and then we can talk about, hey, here's an option we didn't even think of. Maybe we add to the bucket and then start talking about which, which ones of those we want to address. And, and when we're communicating, what are we communicating? or communicating. Please approve this. So that's okay. okay. I think that'd be a great agenda item for next time. That was good. Yeah. 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 One, one time just yeah. 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 So, so, so we'll expand it about just the revenue options that are just talking about much of those other things that, you know, everything. And, and I think you guys asked what are the, the pros and cons, but also the based on past experience, why some of them might not be likely. Right. 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 I'm wondering if there might be some we roll out, but let's, let's get them all yeah. Yeah. in one place. I'm wondering if the communication and outreach committee are actually two committees. The communication is figuring out what our message is, and then outreach is how are we going to get it out. Are those two committees possibly? Or one at first and then divide up? So 
so only a few guys. But I think that's important to have some email discussion on what the purpose and the focus of these committees are, so that we don't spend a lot. Of, I think we need. I think we need to spend some time speaking in email about the activities related to each of these committees because I think that we could spend a lot of time talking about what we want the committees to do and I, I think it would be really good at our next meeting to come out with one or two activities related to what each committee should do. So that requires us to talk about the purpose of each of these committees and give that information to the city. So what one strategy will be if the committees communicate with each other. Right. You can come back at the meeting and report out what you think that is. So that's a perfect idea. We'll put it on the agenda. Right. Chris? Just because we have to actually sign up for them, what I suggest is that the, the committee that I'm going to get together, at least with Nick, this week, and anybody is invited that wants to do it, to me is an emergency because we should have done this two years ago, have a conversation about how we unite and have like one message that we can at least start to use now. Um, and so I think that that committee eventually can also incorporate other stuff and talk about the best way to communicate, blah, blah, blah. But, and, and that we can use what comes out of that committee for outreach, but I agree that maybe there needs to be a sec the outreach, the outreach committee is separate because the outreach committee figures out how we're gonna do outreach and the communication committee is what we're going to communicate when we are doing now. Yeah. People may choose to serve on them. Yeah. <laughs> if, you could, if you could differentiate between the one-time funds versus ongoing funds is very important. Because a lot of times we get one-time funds, but it doesn't satisfy what we really need to, sure. to do the police, the fire, anything else like that. We, we will do that. Okay, so I think, I think we've just rolling through the big items for the agenda, we bring back, at least members of the committee, we bring back the kind of big picture vision, what we're trying to do, the emergency piece that Caitlin talked about. So whoever's working with that committee can bring that back to the group. And then um, I think it was to Sue's point, we would, the group would then try and come to agreement, hopefully they just say, oh, this is great, and check it off and take some minutes. But if that's not the case, maybe that's the first priority on, on the piece. Then we move into um, um, Brian and other people's thoughts on what are our options and, um, and go from there. So we have the list. So I, but I think those are some of the, the key two big ones we heard, right? So I know what people, uh, several people said they had to leave, and I think people are starting to leave. So I think we want to break here, let people who need to leave sign up for any of the committees put their name on there. We'll follow it up with an email, but we think it'd be great if you guys could write your names on there today. And then anyone who wants to stay, um, we can have the kind of discussion on um, Measure I um, and, and that piece, as well as demo of the development website. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I'm still struggling a little bit as far as making sure the rubber now is hitting what's that term, the rubber hits the ground or whatever. It, to make sure that we're effective for the next session, as long as well as maybe signing up for various committees, we, we're, we will need some individuals to some what takes some leadership positions to start to frame out the meeting by each one of those committees. And what I would suggest that we could have a few individuals that may look to do that. We almost need to have a working session for the next group, uh, for the next session. So we can set the agenda, we can facilitate the agenda as a whole but we need almost to have some partition work groups break out and then report back by the end of the session on kind of how we're now cohesively going to move forward. But if not, what I would worry about is we just come to the next meeting, we don't have enough uh, information or discipline around that to be able to say, okay, here's the charter for going forward. So in between now and then, if we're looking at maybe three committees, we're going to have to have individuals that would want to kind of help steer that conversation to prepare for the next meeting. We could set up the agenda so we could have breakouts with each one of these committees to help uh, put a little bit more concise information around that. But we're, we're going to have to get to a working session where we actually walk out and we know some of the actions that are going to be delivered after that. 
I don't have a good answer. I'm just kind of throwing it out there. But I just would be in fear that we would all come back and have more of a general conversation next month. And I'm not sure that is productive as well where we all come back. So, so, yeah, yeah. Um, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, well, right from there. I think um, you and Caitlin volunteered for we did. Caitlin yeah. volunteered yeah. for <laughs> so, so is there I mean I think we had on the on the development project committee, I think Rick had a pretty big interest. Are you are you willing to help kind of Sure, my, my only issue is the next meetings I'm not gonna be here. So, um, so but maybe if you find some partner sure. yeah. when other people sign up, maybe yeah. you can help work with someone else to kind of be the background. So yeah, you can put my name on the okay. bill. Um, and put my name on the communication. But Chris, so I think the point is, for because you asked what should be on the agenda, I think it, breaking out time yeah. for us to develop, to break out to the subcommittees, and then come back and say, this is how we're not overlapping on the committees, mm -hmm. and this right. is the way we're working together. So, that sounds, that sounds perfect. So you're saying as a whole group to talk about that or break no, up? So in meetings? the whole group, say, now we will break into our subcommittee. Yes. And this is the table if you're interested in yes. communication break right here. Okay. And then we're going to do this for 15 yes. minutes or whatever. And then five minutes at the end, we're going to talk about what our goals are and how we're, the committee's going to Yeah, I think we can actually probably do it for half the meeting. Yeah. I mean, if that makes sense. So we'll use the second half of the meeting for that piece, if that sounds OK. So we'll break it up that way. Um, so I think um, the the emergency communications group is a group that's going to try and meet before the next committee. Are there and maybe there is some discussion on the development. Yeah, it depends how many people are. In yeah, it. and then um, the um, the research what works committee. Um, I think we can probably we may not have you. May, you could choose to and try to reach out to people. We'll give you the list, but you may not need to meet before the next next group. And then I think. We had in one committee that was more of a separate committee where we talk about the actual communicating the outrage versus developing the message. Is that right? No, I think that that's the communication. So it's the same set of communication. It's just that that's the long-term goal of this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have the three committees. So so we have three committees. So just. Worry about getting your name on one of the committees. It sounds like, and then we can we can help coordinate that by email uh, next week. Nancy. Do you want us to come to the March twenty first budget community engagement meeting? Yes. Where and you'll let us know where yes. that is. Well, and, and I think one of the things we can talk about is what do we really want to call that meeting? Is yeah. advertising because you guys brought up some great points. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So I'll send you information once we have a location, and if you have ideas about a good name for it. Um, please let me know. And also, if you have some suggestions of good locations, you know, one of the conversations our joke might have was, we, you know, my personal thought is, is I think we would be more effective going out to the people. Obviously, we have to be in a meeting space to talk about a budget, so just having it outside doesn't work. But, you know, I, I've been kind of struggling with coming up with places other than the council chamber to have these meetings, but that has enough space right. if we actually get people. Um, so if you have suggestions, let me know. Yeah, so we're going to go to CC. For, for at least one, if not more of them, and just try to get out of this building because I think people have emotions and connotations tied to this building that um, you know, we want to avoid. Can I suggest that you advertise that there will be some kind of, even if it's just like cookies or snacks, <laughs> advertise that there's food. People line, store magazines, free food, always got people there. Um, it's the free pizza committee. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also, just if, because my schedule is as tight as it is, that helps me that I, like, if I, I know you're running, uh, I know that I'm running and that I will have time to stop by and at least there'll be something that I can eat there. I think, I think that's helpful for moms and parents too. Yeah. And I think we'll talk a little more too, very much to your point about balancing act and the timing of that. and. So that's kind of at the hook and really just try to think yeah, try to strategically that. about how we get that out to everybody because we really do, really do want everybody's input and, you know, just to, to involve everybody. Yeah. Cool. Well, if anybody else wants me to sign them up, I can or you can sign yourselves up. And if you have any questions about development projects, I'm happy to go through them with you. Okay. So we're semi-adjourned, I think until the 28th. But anyone wants to stay and talk about Measure I, let's, let's do that. Anyone who 
what's the question? That is a very good question.